Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Roundtable Live for June 2nd, 2017. I am Bear Taffy, joined by Mathis Games, Rockley Smile, Northern Lion, and joining us again, honorary member of the Roundtable crew, getting more yes. and more excited as I say it. It's Alpac Patrol. It's me. It's How's you. It going? He's here. <clears throat> Gotta compensate him somehow. Yeah, Whoa, ain't with money. Jeez. Bear. <laughs> Your sleeves are a different color than the rest of your shirt. I, I was going to say, right, man, oh, shit, I, I didn't notice that. Straight up, putting this thing on, the only thing that crossed my mind is how long will it take for them to point it out? I saw it immediately. It I just didn't want to be rude. Less than two minutes. It was the show opener, even. It's I like color. your triangle, though, on the front. This That's is, a good triangle. It's got some jewels on it. This Is, is it a t-shirt under a tank top? No. It's I a think one it's attached. It's yeah. a one part t-shirt. It's a one part t-shirt. Yeah. The, it's the very pattern European. is totally it's it does very different. look like actually there's a little bit of You don't like the you don't like the look? You know, I, I, I said I, it was European. That's not a bad thing. Yeah, it's a good yeah. thing. This is a uh, this is a TGN shirt actually. This is this is oh. one of my oh. 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 I don't like your triangle. Explains anymore. everything. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, <laughs> this is my, from my wardrobe of shirts given to me, which is I think the entirety of it at this point. I think I've got probably a dozen shirts that I wear, all of which were either purchased from my Twitch celebrity friends or given to me by various people. You buy well, shirts from your Twitch celebrity oh, friends? Hold on, what you got there? What you got there? Uh, that's a Kate shirt, and um, Mathis has his own shirt on, on brand <laughs> at all times. <laughs> Classic. Then, I'm uh, wearing mine typical outfit. Oh, yeah, we're, 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 oh my, you're, you're a prison <laughs> jumper. Every, everything, everything black at all times. Got, I like to call your look the anti-Andrew WK, Rob, because you've got like a, a mm. similar rocker vibe going, but you're you're mm. the antithesis of him from the neck down. Does he does he not wear all black all the time? He wears all white all the time. Oh, oh does he? Is it so the blood shows better? I think so. Oh. It's Luke this, in A New Hope, and I'm Return of the Jedi. There's that. something there about this camera angle that I just <laughs> don't know what... It's the security cam in his prison cell. It sort of is like a low a low ceiling security cam or something. <laughs> well, cause, cause the thing is, I got, a, I got a big television here, and then the only place to put the cameras is, is, is there. Otherwise, I could just like put it over there. Well, you see, I just I have such a monstrous TV. Like, for, otherwise, it would just be like, oh, hey, guys, how's it going over there? <laughs> well, I do want to see that now. I mean, that'd be pretty good as well. It I looks was, like you know. if you had a haunted house and somebody was going to, like, pop like crack the door a little bit and like mm. stick a witch hand out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Actually, that door has a ghost in it, actually. Really? It'll, it'll, op it'll open on itself. Yeah, I yeah, know. It lives inside of the door. It's is not that, like uh, the air pressure in the uh, in the building or anything. No, it's definitely it's ghost. a ghost. Yeah, is that, no. is that a gonna... closet or does that go out to the rest of the house? Uh, no, that's actually just the drop. That's like a three-story Oh, wow. Huh. I only have, I have a ladder out of the window and that's the only way to escape <laughs> I the see. apartment. I see. <laughs> one, one question and that's it. Yeah, go for it. The, there are many in my head right now, but <laughs> of those, what's up with the garbage bag around the door handle? Yeah, you got a garbage can right there. Oh, that's, uh, well, because that's, uh, it, it's glass. Oh. oh. So that's, uh, when that's filled, then We're I We're always I so worried about Rob being eco-friendly. Little do we know. <laughs> I've got, I got to tell you, I mean, they'll kick me out of the apartment if I don't take the glass down oh, in the basement. Okay. So, you so, know. All we got to do to get you to buy plates is to threaten your threaten eviction. Pretty right much, there. yeah. Like, that's all it is, so. It's much better there than, like, everywhere, so you, like, fall over it, right? So, like, mm -hmm. uh, I remember the days of crippling <laughs> depression. <laughs> uh, that's our cue, dude. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, alcoholism. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, I didn't expect this start today. Hey, everybody. We're doing the show. Uh, we got a docket. We are going to talk about some stuff. We got Steam Direct uh, introducing some new details. Actually announced the self-publishing fee. So we'll go into, go into conversation about that. Nintendo Switch's online service details revealed as well. Uh, the price point there along with some changes to the service that are for the better for the most part. Uh, the Dark Souls video game. Sorry, not the. Yeah, there you go. There's a <laughs> what yes, is that? The Dark breaking Souls story. Video game? They made a video <laughs> game. Wow, that was my favorite movie. Dark Souls video game. The board game is uh, is now available. Is it? So they've got a physical version and like the one within tabletop the, sim, right? And then tabletop sim one. Yep. Okay, cool. So, yeah, we'll be talking about that uh, primarily the tabletop sim version. Uh, then Friday the 13th out of beta into full release. 
1.0 version. Now here we'll be talking about that. Uh, Tekken 7 has made its way to the PC and apparently uh, done so in a pretty good way, surprisingly. so. You're looking at me like I'm going to do the segment now. <laughs> well, no, no. <laughs> It's good. You're, you're going to do the segment later, and by you're going to do the segment, do I mean you're going to do the segment. looking at you, though? That's a good question, I'm... yeah. <laughs> oh, he turned his head as if it was to the box that I'm in, so I thought that meant he was looking at you me. You know what? You guys should start doing that. Like, is it set up the, the right way? Like, if I look start over talking. here, am I talking to Bear? No. Hey bear, going? Truthfully, no, like, bear's the worst, above you. The worst oh. part of this is every time I look at you guys, I look as though I'm looking off at something completely right. unrelated. Like, if I had made it so I'm looking over here, it would make way more sense. It would be so much mm -hmm. more... You got to see what you do is first you force yourself into the bottom panel of the screen mm -hmm. and then you go, hey, Robert, <laughs> hey, Nick, hey, that's Nathan. the way they became the Brady Bunch. <laughs> Actually, wait, can we do the thing where like it, my hands go out of frame and then you guys put the hands Lear, I can just, frame right here? It's going to be different for all of us, though, so I don't know who to take up each hand. Yeah. I think who am I touch? I think I'm touching Nick right now. Looks like so you're touching like, Nick. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, hey! How's it going? Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, there you are. <laughs> Robin is long arm. <laughs> this, is, this is the show. This, this is, is why the... you have me on, actually. <laughs> So. This is for this is for the audio <laughs> listeners in particular, the ones yeah, who don't get any right. visual, <laughs> visual gags. <laughs> hey guys, uh, after Tekken Seven, we'll be talking a little bit about the BattleTech beta. Uh, we're gonna get into Bokita Heartfelt Reunion, along with Star Trek Bridge Crew, came out on uh, every single VR platform uh, a couple days ago, and uh, finally, we'll be wrapping up the conversation today with our May Game of the Month. Continuing segments, trying to trying to make the end end of your recap a little simpler, really, is what that's all about. But also nice to keep tabs on. What May we're was here. a good month. It was. it was because Flint Hook did not come out in May. <laughs> <laughs> you really hate that it. game, huh? I don't hate it. I hate that Carrie. I could have loved it. Yeah, Carrie you hate what it, what it became after the first five hours. Exactly correct. <laughs> Let's start off though with uh, let's start off with a little bit of Steam info. Steam Direct, which we have talked about very recently on the show, actually, is the uh, the new initiative. Steam is taken on to phase out green light and replace it with something a little bit more effective. We now know the uh, the fee that will be associated with self publishing via Steam Direct. Uh, it's going to be set to a hundred dollars per game. Now, this comparing this to green light, which I believe was just a one hundred dollar flat fee. Uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, it, I think the, the the biggest factor to consider, first of all, is whether or not this is going to be enough of a deterrent to the folks that are, you know, looking to just abuse Valve's various systems that are in place right now to make a quick buck off of things like the trading card exploits and things like that. And this seems like it's not exactly really about that anymore as far as i can tell like i don't think they're really worried about that in fact i think they're beginning to move past that and instead focus on just you know ma making the storefront better because it seems as though the the issue isn't really as prevalent as as you know like the the fear mongers would have you believe but i think it's a good price all the same wouldn't you say a hundred dollars per game seems about it right depends what you're going for i think but like i'm not against it like it won't stop uh, bad games from being submitted, exactly. but I think it'll it might do a good job of curtailing what we were completely unaware of existing, which is just releasing literally like a prototype that you can buy on the asset store and then using the trading cards to make a little bit of money. So, I mean, by making that less profitable and by having some kind of manual application process that at least ensures that that's not what's happening, that's like. I mean, if that's what they're going for, I think a hundred bucks is is fine because it also is low enough that uh, it it shouldn't keep out any developers who are actually trying to sell a product. Yeah, hopefully. But I mean, like, you can't publish like anywhere except Itchio for under a hundred bucks. Like, what 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 else are you gonna? Where are you gonna go? If I mean, you, I, if a hundred bucks is too steep, I, I think I think it's a good thing. But um, yeah, yeah, no, you got those kind of things. But obviously, Steam is the platform you want to be on. But um, I mean, the the only one that I can think of probably is um, what was that? Uh, it was like a blocky zombie game, uh, like Unturned. Unturned, yeah. Unturned yeah, was actually like, really good. 
Yeah. Well, so that was made by like a uh, like a fifteen year old kid, and surprising. You know, he he made it in Unity, and that yeah. this is the only this is the only example. This is an exception, you know, obviously not the rule, but he, he probably wouldn't have been able to release that on Steam if it weren't for if if, if it were it cost him a hundred bucks, you know. If I had to guess, then mm-hmm. I don't know. Are you allowed to publish games when you're not eighteen? <laughs> <laughs> he did. Are you, like so. it's work, right? Like, are <laughs> you allowed to make money as a minor that way? It's an interesting question. Yeah, I, I actually just do not know. Yeah, straight up. I know no you idea. can fill out. When I was fourteen, I got a job, but I had to fill out like working papers from the state. I don't know if that was like, like. Well, as far as actual uh, just labor laws are concerned, I think there's even a certain uh, parameter for people. 16 and under too, not just 18 yeah. and under. Unless you work on a farm. Also, Unity has a specific license. You said that was a Unity game, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, you can't sell it unless you buy the commercial license, and that's like a ton of money. So it is mom, like a hundred bucks. Maybe his mom helped him out. That's a hundred bucks? The Unity professional licenses? Yeah, you you pay a little extra up front, I believe, if your company makes over like a hundred thousand dollars a year. Oh yeah, it's based on the income. That's right. But I, we we talked about this before, and I was incorrect. You don't pay a percentage to Unity if you're over a hundred thousand. You just pay like more for the engine. A flat fee. Yeah, I believe yeah. so. At least appreciate that insight. Unity certified developer. Thank you. Really like yeah, you amazingly, uh, when you pay two hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> to take the Unity certified exam, they don't ask you how much it costs to buy Unity. No? They just <laughs> well, what like, we already got it to learn on. Exactly. We, they already got us. <laughs> they don't ask you the minimum age to publish a game on Steam either. I no, guess. they don't ask that, believe it or not. Hmm. <laughs> when you show up to take the exam, they should send you like a token to your phone to prove that you have a real license. Uh, you you do have to <laughs> sign in on their website, which requires having a Unity account, I think. I oh, don't know. okay. It's, so they kind of do. Look, I mean, it's you're only robbing yourself. <laughs> Rob Robin himself exactly. right now. I wish it, like after the test and you passed, you walk into a room and there was six developers all making a different Unity survival game and they'd recruit you. <laughs> I mean, you see, that's but that would be a job is the thing, which is pretty right. sweet. Why don't True. you make a Unity survival game simulator where you make Unity survival games? That's just... It's called Steam. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Enough, Full yeah. circle, see, look, here it is. The thing is, <laughs> Steam Direct... Something, something. I don't know. I feel like it's a positive change. I, I feel yeah. like Steam has gotten yeah, to the point where they can't, uh, they're, they're like so past walled garden that they're really harping on this discoverability update that I just do not care about, but probably matters a lot if you're a developer. So they're like, well, we can't, we can no longer guarantee games any front page coverage because of the fact that we have too many games coming out. So now we're at the point where at least if you make a game that's like, you know, a visual novel where you play as like a hat then other people who have played visual novels in which you play as inanimate on sentient objects will get that more likely to their front page and maybe that'll you know end up resulting in some some attention for you but um as far as like the steam direct thing itself anybody belly aching over it being a hundred dollars i understand where you're coming from because it's not free but at the same time like if you want access to the store that seems fairly reasonable like you have to pay a hundred dollars a year uh, to publish on the iOS app store and that goes through a manual review process too. I don't know how it works for for Google Play Store, but it seems comparable to other platforms with large audiences that apparently need protecting. And that $100 fee is also recoupable, we should note. So if your game True. makes above that threshold, I believe you get that back. I'm pretty sure is how that works. Uh, but along oh. the lines of that uh, discovery update as well, something that maybe will... Uh, you know, matter to us in particular and um, will help out uh, folks in the store more is the fact that they are addressing the curators feature in, in depth, which, you know, we, we mentioned this the last time we talked about this Steam Direct stuff, but the fact that the curators have more or less just gone to the wayside now, I think th- us for the most part, we're not even really using the curator system anymore, uh, especially not on our, you know, creators end. We're not making recommendations just because it doesn't really seem like there's any point to it. But uh, they are addressing that. They're attempting to make it a lot more useful. Uh, They're allowing uh, folks like YouTubers, for example, who use the system and want to link their content to their suggestions and their, you know, reviews. Uh, They're allowing them to, you know, embed YouTube videos with those things or to link directly, which they already do, but they, you know, they want to make that better. 
Uh, they're trying to make curators a bigger part of the store pages themselves, which it's still an opt-in feature, and that's sort of the point, is that if you don't want to see curators telling you what to buy, you never have to. But for those that do, they want to see it actually have an impact, as opposed to it just being this little minute detail on the bottom of the store page that's like, so-and-so also said this game is okay. But... You know, I, funny enough, every time I launch Steam now, I pretty much see either Bear or Ryan's curator page lately. Really? I don't know why that is, but, like, it's been in the last few months I've seen it pretty much every time I go on. I haven't, so, I haven't updated props, that. Props, I guess. It's, it's it likes you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good, I guess. It's good that, it's good that they're going back, because, I mean, you know, having played Dota for, like, 2,500 hours and, you know, being on Steam since Counter-Strike 1.6, like, mm -hmm. Steam tends to, or Valve tends to... Um, like make a feature and then it, they release it and then it's like they just forget well about it's it. there yeah exactly and, mm -hmm. and then you know completely forget about it for years uh so it's good they're going back and trying to like uh to, to get that to be a little bit better yeah. um there there's like there's like a couple search things that i do really wish there was some more uh ease of access going on because like um like when you try to search obviously like for like uh obviously we play a lot of games together so I like searching for like multiplayer games, but there's like four different user defined tags for multiplayer and they don't sync up and they're not like, there's like online multiplayer, co-op multiplayer, multiplayer. And it's like, you don't know what's what. And then it's a, so uh, hopefully they keep updating the platform is basically what I'm getting Did at. Did you ever look in the online multiplayer tags on Steam? Cause I, there's only four pages of them. Yeah, no, I, it's weird. It's bizarre. Cause there's, there's gotta be more games than that. There are. There, there's also, like, if you look in some of those tags, I was looking at it the other day. Like, was, when you're looking in some of those tags, um, I got, like, a visual novel in there as a multiplayer game. It's like, is this like a, right. like a Nintendo thing? It's like, yeah, it's, it's multiplayer because you get to watch your friend play Zelda and experience <laughs> it together. It's multiplayer. So, like, so I don't is know that, if that's like, I'm yeah. wondering if that's a case of the user-defined tag failure or if it's a case of, like, developers putting extra tags on their game so that they show up in more search criteria. So it's like, yeah, I mean, this mm -hmm. is this is multiplayer. Sure, let's throw that in that mix. Why not? I don't yeah. think the developers tag it, though, right? It's based on, Do they not? like, user, user yeah, submission. Yeah, right. we I have that, but I always... Sarcastic shit in there. I think there's two two tagging yeah. systems, right? I always like, assumed that there was a, and, uh, a back The only reason I know there's this too is because the Project Zomboid devs had to go up against a couple of devs that were using Project Zomboid in their dev tags to have oh, their game yeah. show up more often and they had to be oh. like mm, can't do oh that. that's like putting PewDiePie exactly in here. man yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> don't do that that's don't funny. do that not that the tags matter anymore for YouTube though but that's a whole nother conversation Just still don't do that yeah. it's not like YouTube matters anymore <laughs> they're not like yeah, making videos on the internet matters anymore right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, as far as the price point is concerned, I, I'm just mostly of the opinion that like this is this is about the only threshold that everyone can walk away relatively happy with. You know, like there's still going to be some folks that will think, ah, hundred dollars is too much. I can't ever publish for that cost. But I mean, like Ryan said, you kind of just have to, you know, accept the cost of doing business, as it were. Uh, so yeah, there's the Steam Direct update. I'm sure we'll know more about that soon but they have made the announcement just a few days ago that that's going to be going down all right on to nintendo switch we get some more details about their online service coming out uh the big one first of all is the price point of course uh is going to be offered for 20 dollars a year and will launch at some point in 2018 you can also get a one month sub for four dollars and a three month subscription for eight bucks so definitely on the lower end Twenty a year or four dollars a month? I feel like that math doesn't add up very well. It doesn't at all. No, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, tell that's a, tell it's the deal like for one, one year subscriptions then, basically. Yeah, it's like one point four or one point two something per, yeah. per month in the in the twenty dollars a year. So yeah. So that's, why why do the month at all? I guess is what I'm saying. But anyway, sorry. Go ahead. I I mean, so the the price point right out of the gate is oh well, that's impressive. But of course, you got to ask yourself, okay, so what are they including with this? So naturally, online play is a given. Uh, the voice chat and online lobby features themselves, though, which you know normally you would assume is also a given, uh, is a little convoluted. So it's not 100 percent concrete yet. But the way it looks right now is that there is going to be a third party, or not, not a third party, a first party Nintendo smartphone app that you will download onto your phone 
And yeah, and you no, know, Mathis's reaction is appropriate. So let me try to explain this with words. The, vo the I feel like what you're about to say is like all the voice stuff is going to be taken care of on your phone, oh, God, but not on the console itself. So, and you can play your Mario games on it. Don't tell me that's true. So this is all. What I'm about to say is based off of not exactly 100% 100% concrete information, but there's like images that have been spread around that are detailing what it looks like Nintendo is going to be doing. So. It looks like they've got a sort of mixer device that you use with the Switch. You plug your Switch into this mixer. You also plug your smartphone into the mixer using just like an eighth inch millimeter no cable. Oh shit. And then you also plug a headset into this mixer. No. That's three wires too That's many. That's three Whoa. wires going into a single mixer. Nintendo loves peripherals. <clears throat> And I still, so it's like, I'm pretty sure this isn't necessary. I yeah, because <laughs> get a link on this, like, something about that doesn't seem right. There's no I way. I swear to God. And there's... then your phone and then a headset? At that point, thank God the Switch is mobile so I can sit at my computer and use Skype. <laughs> don't, don't you just download it on your phone and then... My phone is a mic and a speaker in it. Wait, yeah, like... <laughs> So he's like, <laughs> let me hold on. I'm gonna find the image because you can just I link a Bluetooth yeah. headset to your phone. I'm, I'm being sincere right now because yeah, this yeah. seems like that's t too far. Mm -hmm. That seems way too far. So someone linked it in chat. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, I got the looks... image pulled up on Kotaku right now, but here's what it looks like. So you got you link it in a uh, Skype or something. You've got your. Oh yeah, no, I, I can't. <laughs> he's I really not, he's can't. Not kidding. Sorry. That's exactly what that is. <laughs> So you've got the headset, right? And the headset plugs into this mixer. And the mixer looks like a little arrow. So at the point of the arrow is the, is the place where you plug in the headset. And then at the base of the arrow, oh, Christ. on the right side of it, you're plugging in your phone. And on the left side of it, you're plugging in the switch. That's what I'm seeing. All right. Yeah, that's idiotic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. Is, Fuck is this it, company. Is the <laughs> oh only way God. to use it? Is the only way to use it with a smartphone? Then I or, think or, or, so. Because chat says it's I'll, not required. Okay. For the voice chat or just in general? I, well, I mean, it's not required in general. Obviously, if you don't want to use the voice chat, yeah, you don't have to. Have right. It. Yeah. Well, because because the thing is, like, I mean, I, I mean, granted, I know that this is uncommon, but up until like a year ago, I didn't have a smartphone, so I, I would not be able to use... Or, I mean, like, even if, like, you don't need to plug in, like, every single wire, how about you just, you know, go about the route of 2017 and plug a headset into the fucking system and just works? <laughs> Why do I need my right. phone for any of this that's shit? Like a, that's a 2002 standard, honestly. Fucking Xbox controllers had the headsets plugged directly into them. Since the original yeah, console, since Xbox Wait, Live, we, PSP allowed you to plug a headset and talk <laughs> over it. I, I'm I, still like I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt here because I'm looking at this article, and I'm not like I'm not convinced that this is the way that they want you to do it. It looks like it says official, but it says it's Hori's official Splatoon 2 headset. Does that mean like Corey's third party, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. does that mean like Nintendo is like, sure, you can like here's no, your the, official Splatoon license. The thing is though, like that headset appears in the game. Right, but you know, I mean that Tony Hawk's like Pro license, Skater. Yeah, that's you true can, too. It could be a license right. deal, but still like a bag of Cheetos or something. But it, like I just I just don't know. I can't fathom Nintendo engineers being like, this is the way that you have to do voice chat on our system. This that seems like should be the motto of Nintendo, actually. <laughs> what you just said <laughs> is the motto. Wait, no, but it's only one step away from what we already know they do want you to do, which is to use a smartphone to do voice chat. Right, and that's right. still, like, that's still really crazy. dumb. That's, yeah, <laughs> that's still I will give stupid. You that, Less but... stupid than that, still pretty stupid. Well, apparently, someone in chat said that apparently, like the phone is necessary, but the mixer is not. Right. So, okay. So, well, yeah. still, and, like, but that being said, ahead, in the rare instance I'm gonna like defend Nintendo a little bit, I have never wanted voice over IP in a Nintendo game. Splatoon makes sense, I guess, because if you're playing it like semi seriously or competitively, to be able to coordinate is good. But when I play Mario Kart Online, I'm like, this is just real people have replaced the AI and that's yeah. the perfect experience for me right now. So 
Oh, well, I don't know if you heard, but they're coming out with Splatoon 3. It's going to be a Battle Royale game. No, so dude, that would they... be pretty sweet. <laughs> I tweeted that. They should make a Nintendo Battle Royale. It's like 100 Marios shooting each other to death in a field. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I wouldn't that's, mind. That's that what cool. uh, Mario X Rabbids is going to be, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Looks like it yeah. <laughs> from the picture. Uh, but, yeah, I so I do want to, you know introduce this heavy caveat again which is to say none of this is confirmed as far as the voice chat stuff goes so we're looking at the same stuff and speculating in the same ways that the entire internet is right now but with what we see man that is that is some antiquated shit like they've got to get on the ball with this stuff like no one wants to download an app for voice chat and i'm pretty sure like this is just an effort to get people to download a Nintendo app. Right. Like, at the end of the day, let's get some Nintendo app users. And this is a this great is their, way to do it. This is the first step of their transitioning to becoming a mobile only. Oh, no, you, I, not you, guys, far with it, no, you guys are you guys are so... <laughs> this is the time to not be cynical about Nintendo. They there came no out for that. They came out with a console that has a bullshit gimmick that's actually good. It, the, they, I'm going to turn this around, their, though, though. Hold on. They said that about well, the Wii. Yeah, but all of their ideas of like, well, it's a console that you put up your butt and you squeeze it to play. Like this one <laughs> delivered, and yeah, like how many fucking ice cubes are in the the controller right now? Tell me that, <laughs> dude. This this is like we're crossing the line from like ironic cynicism into genuine cynicism. Now, the Switch is doing well right now. You you gotta let me go with the full cycle here though because we had we had the introductory shitting on them and now we've got the but wait they did something good part. So let's get into that. But wait. And then the online service for twenty dollars a year is actually great. Mm -hmm. Especially because we've been riffing on this stupid uh like pay fifteen dollars to buy Super Mario World for like the twentieth time virtual console setup that they've got. As long as they have like some kind of decent library even if titles rotate like in and out i think that being able to have sort of like a netflix for classic nintendo titles is a great idea that's yeah that's about what i was gonna say just then yep yep those are the words i was gonna use is that they do they changed what they were going to do you know like remember back when we were initially discussing this they also had pitched the idea that they were going to give the uh subscribers one nintendo classic title per month that would Mm -hmm. then be rescinded at the end of the month and they flip-flopped on that for the better they're now like you said turning it into like a netflix of classic nintendo titles which is great that's an awesome value for twenty dollars a year especially if it's like you said like a good library that'd be fantastic i hear they're gonna be releasing three new games onto that service every month i think Mm -hmm. is uh i think the rumor i don't know if it's confirmed or not some That's, of which we I, I agree. will have included online play, which is even better. That sounds That's fucking fantastic. sweet. That's fantastic. I'm super glad to hear that because, Rob, you're muted. Uh, I'm super glad to hear that because um, I was that was one of the worst parts of the original plan that they had was, like, the whole you get in the game and we're taking it away at but the end of the month. They only changed because of the outrage. They wanted good, to get good, away then they, it. No, That's that, perfect. yeah, you can't get mad at them for that, seriously. I'm like, mad at them for coming up with that idea in the first place. <laughs> but, they, but at least, like, they heard us and listened to the consumers, which is us what particularly should They do. listened to which, us. Yeah, which is new for Nintendo as well. Like, that's that's also a good thing. Yeah. Um, the... The one thing I actually I actually want to bring up a somewhat tangential yet um, yet not I will say not irrational concern that I have sure. over the the voice app thing. You get the app on their phone. Are they going to start pushing advertisements to it? And the reason that I ask this and why it's not irrational is because they do I, that I, already. I, yeah, I, I have a Wii U, and uh, you know I had it hooked up for Breath of the Wild and stuff. I would have the volume turned off. On the Wii U game. Pack. Oh, yeah. I would have mm-hmm. the console off. Yep. It would push an ad with sound on to the, the tablet. To the gamepad. Yeah, on the tablet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, like, it would happen all the time until mm-hmm. I, I just, I, I would let it power out. Like, I would let it drain the battery because it's just like, like, what, how, why do you think that's a good idea? Why is that a good idea? So, but I, that, that's, that would be my concern with the, with, with the voice app or whatever. But, but in, in general, yeah, I mean, I think Nintendo's doing. Yeah, Some pretty I, good things. If they the, the main thing for me with Nintendo and the Switch specifically, my main problem with Nintendo for the past couple of years is just that they haven't had a huge catalog of games uh, coming out, like new ones. I mean, even the yeah. stuff even the stuff that the Switch is coming out with now are Wii U ports. 
you know, like the Mario Kart 8 or whatever. Um, so if they can shore that up for me personally as a longtime Nintendo fan, then maybe I'll consider getting a Switch. Word. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is a perfect video game. I'm just going to throw that out there. It may not be original. Is I mean, Deluxe... That's, that's like, fine. Are you saying, like, Deluxe is superior to 8, too? I mean, it's been, like, four years since I played Wii U's version of Mario Kart 8, so I'm not... Uh, I'm not going to stand behind that necessarily, but I will say that I could play Mario Kart 8 Deluxe probably like an hour a day every day until I died. Oh, yeah. I think 8 is it's just a, a perfect game. video game, though. Just a, like a very pleasant game to play. Mm-hmm. And every time I play it, I'm like, this is still like a little magical. I want to just... I, I, I'm, I'm supplanting that idea with the fact that 8 was already pretty goddamn good and didn't require the Switch update. But well, no, it did because nobody had a Wii U. Well, yeah. <laughs> so they needed, you know, to get it to a market that had people to buy it. Mm-hmm. I think that was the point. It's like, well, we now we know the Switch is hugely successful, is outsold, however, whatever consoles they've had in the past, mm-hmm. uh, in its first whatever months. Let's get a game, let's release this game, re release this game again, and people will buy it. I have a question, actually. Do we, a couple of us have Switches here, right? Yep. Is the friends list like logical no in any way? I don't use it at all. All right. See, because like you know, the Wii U and and the DS both have like probably the worst friend system that I've ever seen. <laughs> well, I mean, the friend code so. system is just like I yeah. I still don't understand why you would adhere to that idea this late in the game. But yeah, um, and, and it, it is what has, it is. You can have a hundred friends on it. <laughs> and yeah, you can have you can have the same account across your Wii U and the DS. Friend codes don't transfer. They don't. Uh, they don't. You have to add them in manually. Uh, except it does go from Wii U to DS, but not the other way around because <laughs> reasons. I don't know why. I just <laughs> why are there Nintendo. why are there limits on friends lists at all? Like how much data is that saving in the long run? I guess I have no idea, but. I just really wish that was not still a practice. It's it's very frustrating. Even on like Battle.net, they still got a goddamn limit on your friends list. It's so silly. Mm-hmm. Well, the Steam awesome. one is is the weirdest of all, where they incentivize. They, yeah, oh, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. Behind. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, is there is there a level at which I could get you to cap my friends list at like 25, so that <laughs> I don't have to purge every invite once every two weeks or something like that? <laughs> but sweet. All right. There's the Nintendo Switch online details, I'm sure. I'm sure that we haven't seen the last of that one. Well, let's move on to the Dark Souls board game. Mathis, sure. please. Yeah, uh, so recently I played the Dark Souls board game. Saw it in person, didn't have time to play it in person at Momocon, but uh, got together with uh, TB and Nerd Cubed, and we played on Tabletop Sim. Um, the advertisement is like one and a half to two hours. We played for four hours, and we're only halfway through. We're going to finish it oh, next man. week. So it's long. Um, maybe if you have the rules down, it goes quicker. Um, but the idea is it's a cooperative board game up to four players where you go through the semi-randomized randomized dungeon uh, where you'll, and at the end of the first floor, you encounter a mini boss, and then you go through it again, and at the, um, the second floor, you encounter the main boss, which you draw from cards. Uh, it's very much a, a dungeon crawler where you're going through, killing, killing monsters, gathering souls, uh, gathering gear, going back to the bonfire, and then leveling your character up to equip that better gear so that your stats uh, match. It's, it's very Dark Souls, where like a piece of armor requires 28 strength, 30 intelligence. All right, there's this pool of souls we have to share between the four of us. Who's going to take what, and who's going to upgrade what, and, and get the better gear, depending on the class you're playing. It's a really cool um It's cooperative, then? It is 100% cooperative. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep, it is not. There is no backstabbing or invasions though i'm told there's an invasion expansion pack coming and more monsters and all that other stuff it's really fun and i think they've translated the the difficulty of dark souls really well um the gear and the souls and all that stuff has been translated really well uh but there are aspects of the game that i find unpolished and a little clunky and this is some coming from somebody who really likes complicated board games i have the game of thrones board game star wars rebellion uh i've played a lot of games that have a lot of rules and this is one of the ones that really feels like could have used some streamlining uh, with how, how the game works, specifically the boss battles. 
So a lot of the way you figure out how enemies move, they have behavior patterns and it's all on the enemy card. So hollow soldiers will always move towards the player with the aggro token on them and then they will do an attack. Um, all enemies get to attack all at once and then one player gets to attack and then all enemies get to attack again, then the next player gets to attack, which helps simulate the difficulty of the game where you're constantly getting your face beat in. Um, our very first room we entered, we all wiped. If one player oh, wow. wipes, well, if one player dies, all three of you die. Mm. So it's it's you kind of have to manage, um, you kind of have to manage uh, each other in a, in a way. It's hard. I don't want to go through all the details of the game because the game has a lot of pieces. Sure. Um, but my complaint about the game is the way, like I said, the way enemies and bosses work in particular. Because again, on the card is the way they move. But it's all symbols, and it's kind of a clusterfuck. And the rules, some of, some of the rules for the way the boss moves are written in a vague way where you're kind of like, well, do they mean it like this, or do they mean it like this? Because if it can mean everybody gets hit or nobody gets hit, depending on how you interpret some of the rules. Um, and it makes the boss fight really, really clunky. Uh, we, we fought the gargoyle for the first mini boss, and um, a lot of his attacks are like tail swoop attacks and whatnot. And the sense that the the boss figures have, uh, what do you call it, like sections on them that they hit from. Mm. Um, if you're not on that particular section where he's hitting, he can miss you. But if you're on the other like two, he can hit you. It's 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 a little obnoxious. And the reward for killing the bosses is, is like no souls at all. You just get gear. You get minimal souls, and that felt like a really crap reward. Uh, the game is also very heavily dice based, so there's a lot more luck in the game than skill, ah. and that. <laughs> kind of bothers me because I understand the need for dice. You're playing a board game. There's going to be an element of chance and an element of luck, but there really needs to be more uh, risk management in the game to make it feel like your calls, your decisions on where to move have more of an effect on how much you're going to get hit or how difficult the room is. And much like Dark Souls, if you die, so you get, say you get through three out of the four rooms before the boss fight and you die and you go back to the bonfire all of those rooms respawn. You have to go through all of them again. Oh, man. Um, and you drop all your souls. So if you lo you have to go back and get those souls again. So you can't go to the bonfire and then upgrade after you die. What you have to do is make a judgment call. Shit, we've already used, two out of the three of us has used our Estus flask. We're about to go to the boss. We go to the bonfire, use a tick of the bonfire, refill our Estus, cash in our souls, get new gear, but then have to go through all of that again. Right. If you have the good enough gear, it makes the rooms really quick. But if you've got kind of garbage drops, then going through those rooms again can be a kind of a chore. I give it like a seven out of ten. I think it's it's really a really good translation. But if you're not a Dark Souls fan, I don't know how much enjoyment you can get out of it. That was yeah. That was one of my first questions. Was like, are non Dark Souls people really going to be able to enjoy this at all? Just, I I of... err on the side of no because a lot of it is is very heavily themed in that world and the difficulty is like man this is dark souls i'm getting my ass kicked by mobs yeah, like, yeah. one bad dice roll could mean we the whole party wipes and like that's kind of there's a kind of a thrill there um but a, if you aren't into the dark souls the way dark souls work where you die and you drop everything mm -hmm. and you lose it all then you may not enjoy the game very you much you know the very central conceit of dark souls comes down to uh, the controls and the way the dexterity functions with experience and the visuals. And both of those things are missing in the concept of a board game. I mean, you say that the difficulty translates fairly well, but I'm not sure that those things necessarily equate in any way. And it sort of sounds like, you know, the that might have been just replaced by dice, which is not, yeah, not really so, ideal. Yeah, the way the way dice works is like your basic gear. You There's three colored dice, black, uh, blue, and... I forget what the highest, I think it's red, mm. um, could be wrong. And then there's dodging dice. So if you decide to dodge roll, you have to roll dodging dice and you have to beat a number. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But the black dice is like three of the sides are blank, meaning you roll zero. Two, uh, one is one, one is two, and one is, it might be two or one and one is two. So you can't go roll very high. But then you upgrade your gear and now all of a sudden you're rolling blue dice every single side of a blue dice has a number on it at least. You still could be rolling ones, but there's a two and a three on there as well. And then red dice is like bare minimum you can roll as like a two and then there's higher three and then four. Okay, okay. So yeah, you're rolling dice, but at least at least the chance of failing is, is mitigated a little bit there. 
Um, but it's it's a heavily gear based. It's it's a dungeon crawl. It's a, it's a dungeon crawl game with a heavy difficulty to it. People are saying a seven out of ten is not that great. In my world, a seven out of ten is pretty freaking good. I I like it. Um, but in a world where Game of Thrones and Star Wars Rebellion exists, uh, where I think those games can be enjoyed, whether or not you enjoy the series, um, the the game. You have, I think you have to be a Dark Souls fan. I'd be curious to see where the game is six months from now when a few expansions have hit and really fleshed the game out a little bit more with invasions and summons yeah, and definitely. different mobs and more treasure, that kind of stuff. Um, but it has its problems. It's, it's, a little, it's a little clunky. Yeah, definitely looking forward to seeing what invasions will constitute because I really yeah, don't know I'm how Yeah, I'm curious how that's going to end up working. This. You have your friends Skype in and roll a bunch of dice. <laughs> yeah, can you just uh, roll dice and invade and kick my ass, please? I would assume that what will end up happening is there will be, like, NPC invasions, like in the game, where uh, NPCs can show up, but they can be wearing, like, player gear, mm -hmm. and they kind of become their own boss fight. Oh, uh, yeah. That could work, yeah. But yeah. It, it, yeah, I think it's good. Uh, I think if you enjoy Dark Souls and you enjoy board games, you'll enjoy the game. But if you're not a Dark Souls fan, it can feel slow and kind of overly like frustratingly difficult if you don't understand like the the purpose of the game and i could feel a little grindy having to go through the same rooms over and over if you die a lot right, yeah. or you decide to go back and cash in your souls and use the bonfire um people were asking can you grind forever in the game and just like grind souls and get better gear and just keep going no because the bonfire has like specific amount of uses per floor meaning three you can buy more uses but it costs souls and you don't necessarily want to do that. Got it. Sweet. I I still think I want to try it out. I I think I'd probably even prefer the physical version. This is a really minute thing, but do you think you would have enjoyed it more if it were the physical version? From what I know and looked at the physical version, uh, setup for the physical version would take like fucking forty five minutes. Oh boy! There's so oh, many. No. <laughs> there's so many pieces to the game. There's so many different decks and so many different cubes and mm. dice and. So maybe it's, it's actually better suited for tabletop sim. The, the tabletop sim one is just an instant. You, they, the mod or whatever comes instantly set up. Yeah. So you don't have to think about any of the break, uh, the setup or teardown of the game. Mm -hmm. well, Has anybody played sold? VR version of tabletop yet? I feel like I would get sick. The game doesn't run on a smooth 60 alone without That's it. So. I would love the idea of not having to fuck around with the, the clicking and yeah, moving, dragging yeah. stuff and be able to actually just like pick up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be really that satisfying. Be pretty cool, yeah. Should try that out. Yeah, I'm curious how that works too. But uh, yeah, we there we go. Should play more tabletop simulator. Yeah, let's all be buddies in VR. It's just not <laughs> the same. It isn't the same. Yeah, it's. I I know it's come a long way, but it's. I don't like playing like middling board games in tabletop simulator because it's like oh we're gonna play like Monopoly, but then it's just harder to move the train to Baltic <laughs> Avenue like. I just find it kind of tedious most of the time. Although I appreciate it for the engine that it is. Like, yeah. usually, I was hoping the VR version would fix, make that stuff more accurate. Mm -hmm. Once that game can run in 75 frames smoothly without VR attached, I'll give it a try. Otherwise, it sounds like a vomit-inducing experience for me. Mm -hmm. Sweet. There's too many moving parts. Well, speaking of vomit-inducing experiences, Friday the 13th, the game has come out of beta. That was that you can you can infer that a number of ways, but <laughs> currently uh, currently available came out May twenty sixth. We have played the uh, beta version, of course, the lot of us. But now Mathis and Rob have both had some extensive experience with the full release. Uh, Rob, why don't you tell me about it thus far for you? So um, outside of a couple hiccups in the first like two days of the game coming out with um, multiplayer kind of being buggy. Um, now it, it just pretty much works. Um, so, you know, that aspect of it is, is, is more by the wayside. That's the, good. Um, yeah. As far as, like, uh, if you played the beta, you've mostly played this game. Um, they've added a couple of other things, like Jason now has two more, like, abilities. Um, he can pick um, knives out of walls and throw them at, uh, at people. He can put down bear traps now. Uh, which is also cool because, you know, if, if you're chasing somebody in a house, you can you know, do stuff like that. Uh, there's two more maps. Um, there's, I think, a couple more counselors than in the beta. 
Um, but but yeah, like I said, it, it's it's mostly the the same as it was in the beta. Um, and uh, honestly, I I I have a good time playing it. I I, I do really actually enjoy it. Um, even just queuing against people. Uh, if 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 you don't know, it's an asymmetrical horror multiplayer game. Yeah, you get to uh, say yeah, it, and it's real this time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, it's a special uh, horror multiplayer game, and um, uh, Jason is, compared to a game like Dead by Daylight, which I think is what most people think of when they think of that, um, Jason is, like, way more powerful than those killers, which, to me, in Dead by Daylight, those killers just feel kind of just anemic, you know, they're, they're, they're like, they, they feel like they're they should be in, in, on crutches or something the whole time they're trying to chase people down, whereas Jason is very, very powerful. Um, I have hypothesized that the reason for this, and so a lot of people, when they see me playing it, they're like, oh, Jason's OP, Jason's so overpowered, like, it's just it's stupid to play it. But in my experience, most games, most games, at least a couple to half to more than half of the counselors get away. And mm. I think... I think it's this. I think the design. Here's my hypothesis. I think the design is uh, similar to Battle uh, Battlefront, the EA Star Wars game, where when you're playing as Jason, they want you to feel powerful. They want you to get a couple of kills at least if you're playing them, as compared to Dead by Daylight, where it's it's not even particularly likely that you'll even get one kill if you're if you're not particularly good. Even a bad Jason can probably get at least one or two counselors. Um, which is, which I, I actually think is a good thing, I, I, for, for the most part, because I don't really care about dying as a counselor. The one thing that I will say about uh, my major problems with the game um, uh, it actually doesn't even come from design, it's the community. As I've been playing it more, uh, there have been several instances, I've gotten into several matches where... Um, so, because like when you when you when you're in a match when you're in a lobby, you pick your counselor and you pick your your Jason, right? So, and you could be randomly selected to be Jason or the counselor. Um, several times, I'll run into people who just work with Jason and just walk their counselor oh. around to the other counselors, <laughs> and then Jason just won't kill him. And it's just like, what's that? Like, why? Like, who can't? just <laughs> have fun so in a video yeah. game. Why do you want to yeah, win so really bad weird. at Friday the Thirteenth? It's just the fucking. But so anyway, so that's 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 one major right that I have in mind. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit buggy as well, you know, similar to the beta. Uh, but most they're they're not game breaking for the most part, um, and they're they're funny. They're kind of Skyrimy kind of bugs. So yeah, they're I, very I, Skyrimy bugged. bugs. I had yeah. a bug where Jason was trying to kill somebody in a in a cabin, and the person got glitched to the roof of the cabin, and then he just <laughs> sat sat stood on the roof for five minutes until the timer went out. <laughs> and he's like, "You can't kill me up here. There's nothing you can do." It was a really bizarre glitch. That's, uh, that's I think game I breaking. I mean, you can't finish that match because of that. No, the time. There's a timer. Game. The, oh. you have 20 minutes, and then you can't if you don't kill. Anymore, is what I mean. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, there's not much you can do. Uh, if the counselor can jump off the roof if he wants, but he's he wants to win, so he stayed up. Why didn't those kids in the Friday the Thirteenth movies ever just get on a roof? I know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jason so can't stupid. get up there. Can't get up reason. there. Uh, I think I, I echo almost everything that you've you've said. I. It took me a while. I, I at the beginning, I was like, "This game is actually terrible. I think it's really bad." Um, but I, I came around to it when I started to play with friends and, and ditched solo because solo is a fucking nightmare if you're a counselor. Uh, if you're Jason, it's great because almost everybody doesn't understand the nuances of the game and what causes Jason to see you and what sets off blips on his radar. Um, and people don't understand as well. It took me a little while to understand where you said Jason is purposely overpowered as hell. The point as counselor is to avoid confronting him at all costs. You don't ever want Jason to see you because if the chase starts, you are not getting away from him. There's just no way. Part, he yeah. will catch you eventually. Um, which is great because you can at least play a distraction if you're playing with friends. Um, and I do agree that you, like what you said, Jason will always kill at least a couple counselors. Every escape route cannot accommodate every single counselor. Like, the biggest car can carry four people at most. And there was a point where I was playing with some friends where there were five of us, and we had the four-seater car up and running, and we had to drop somebody. And we were like, all right, man, here's what we've got for you is, like, leftover stuff. We hope you get out, but we're not taking you. Goodbye. And we, like, we'd leave him <laughs> and left him whatever we could. Um, and I like that a lot. I, I think Jason being overpowered as hell is done on purpose. The problem I have with the developers is they don't make that clear. 
like in the marketing and anything, they leave yeah. out so much important information on how to play the game that when you play it, especially as a counselor, you're like, I don't understand why he keeps finding me. How does he keep finding me? What am I supposed to do? One of the things they don't tell you is that there's a fucking jog button. Use it. God, don't sprint. Yes. If, you're, yeah. if you're sprinting, there will always be a little pip in his vision that he'd be like, there's somebody over there. If you jog, it's a lot less likely. And if you play a counselor who's a lot stealthier, it's almost impossible for him to see you while you're jogging and a lot less likely to see you while, he's, while you're even sprinting. Um, crouch, hide. Like, he can't see you if you're not making a ton of noise. And that not being explained, and I get into a pub, and there's a metric F ton of people just sprinting everywhere, looking and running and, like, jumping through windows. I'm like, he's going to be here any minute because he can goddamn see you guys making a ton of noise. But once that clicks, once you understand the nuances of staying quiet and hiding and uh, not running unless absolutely necessary, as Jason, it's much harder to find the counselors and your tactics change drastically. And as a counselor, it becomes a lot more tense because all of a sudden, like, oh shit, the music's playing, he's nearby, stay hidden, wait for him to go. Okay, he's breaking on the door, but does he know I'm in here? If I hide and hold my breath, okay, he's leaving. Like that aspect, which is what the game was marketed as, starts to take shape. And it's really nice. And as a Jason who played in a lot of pubs and just murdered every counselor, once I started playing with friends, you have to start thinking like three steps ahead. All right, I'm gonna teleport myself to the car, set a couple bear traps on the car, leave the car, go to where the cop phone is on the map, set up a couple traps on the cop phone. Oh shit, they triggered a trap. I'm gonna head back there now. And he, the strategy starts to take shape and that's great. But it really, like the game does not spell that out for you. So first few games, you're like, this game is stupid. I don't understand why he keeps finding me. And that, I think that needs some more fleshing out. I, I will say too, yeah, like like to, to what, to Mathis's point, um, strategy and uh, skill actually does factor into the game, which I, I feel has been less so in a lot of those asymmetrical multiplayer horror games like, you know, Damned and Dead by Daylight. Like, um, playing as Jason against shitty counselors, I'll kill them all. But Easy. It, uh, play, playing against, like, people who are who play the game well, I, I've had a, a much harder time. I've, I've had games where I've, where I've only play, I've only killed, like, you know, three three of them. Or, or, or one or two and um that 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 actually is a measure of, of skill which i know it isn't something to be like super excited about about a video game like oh if you're skilled you do better but like in this a particular scenario i think that that is an important factor and i will say there are some there are some really awesome moments uh that happen in, in like crazy escapes like uh, there was one that happened the other day where me and Jess were uh, trying to escape in a, in a it, like basically uh, people tried to get out in a car and then it, it seemed like they got stopped by Jason because the car was gone. So I was like, let's go after the car. Let's let's just, let's do, go for that. And he's chasing after us on the road. I've got a flare gun. She's got a shotgun because she's Tommy Jangus. And um, she uh, so she runs up to the car. I'm like, get in, get in. I'll, I'll distract him. I'll distract him. And then, she, and then he put a bear trap next to the car and she gets stuck in. And she's like, I'm like, oh God, all right, I'll walk up to him and, and try to get him to grab me because I got a pocket knife. I'll stab him in his neck and stun him. And then he doesn't, he decides not to go for the stun or not for the grab and he starts slashing me. And then I, I look behind me and she pulls out the shotgun and blasts him and we get in the car and it's like trying to start up. We're like, oh my God, go, go, go. And Jason's like slowly getting up in the background and we like barely escape. And it's just like, that's a cool moment. It's like something out of the movie and that's, that's, yeah. that's fun, you know? So this, like, I, I'm thinking about it now. Obviously, we're comparing it to, De to Dead by Daylight pretty significantly. Uh, but Dead by Daylight it just sort of has kind of an inherent silliness to it, you know, where, especially because of the state that the game is perpetually in, you know, like, you, you got to sort of take it with a grain of salt. But with this, you if you let yourself, it sounds like it can become a much more intense and riveting experience. Especially when Jason eventually gets all of his abilities, because over time as Jason, your abilities will unlock, so you don't just start with everything. Once he gets his last ability, Stalk, which uh, when you activate it, when you're near counselors, no music plays, they have no idea you're nearby. Ooh. And you, like if you know where they are, and you, uh, he's playing Stalk and you're in a house, you have no idea he's there, and all of a sudden the door bursts open and Jason walks through, it's fucking, it can, it can scare the <laughs> shit out of you, because... He, he knew you were there, but you had no idea it was out there. Yeah. Uh, there are some great moments. There's some really funny moments, too, because the face expressions on the counselors are derpy as hell. <laughs> yeah. They're really terrible. Wait, do you guys not think that they're inexcusably awful looking? 
because I can't They're pretty bad. Oh, They're really, really bad, yeah. They're pretty bad, but it makes me laugh because it doesn't it's break the game. It's hilarious, though. Yeah. That's what, like, my, my impressions, at least of the beta, were like, this is, like, a bad game that's really fun. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's the better experience... than beta, but it's still similar. I, if, if, if you were going to go, like, by that metric, like, it's, it's farther away from, like, something like Goat Simulator on that same kind of scale and closer to... Dead by Daylight. Wait, is it intentional? Because I, I can't tell. I thought it just was that way because they didn't fix it. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it's not, it doesn't have a lot of game-breaking bugs, to be honest with you. There's one exploit that happens right now where you can crouch and still sprint, um, which is a Oh, that's got to look there. pretty silly. Yeah, no, that one, that one people have... I've, I've seen that in, in, uh, in one game, um, but they're patching that out. And for, for the most part, the bugs are, are just like... <laughs> You know the hair goes crazy, or and the, you know the in-game the in-game VoIP system is fantastic. Like yeah, that's how is, the game should yeah. be played. Do not play on Discord. Like if we ever play together, we're don't use Discord, don't use Skype. Just mm-hmm. play with the in-game VoIP because it's a uh, it's area effect of how your voice uh, can be where it can be heard. Mm. Um, if you get walkie talkies and you can talk across the map, and Jason can hear you talk if he's nearby, so that gives a little bit of like, do I want to talk now? Do I think he's nearby and stuff? But it's some really fun moments that can be had, like. Uh, there was somebody, I was on like, a, I was Jason and somebody was trying to get away on the second floor of a building and I caught him and I just threw him out a window. And yeah. there was somebody down there, you just heard them go like scream because like his body just comes flying out of a window and hits the ground. That's that sounds really fun. It's yeah. way better than Dead by Daylight, but I, I agree with Ryan where it's like, it's not a great game, but with friends, it's fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fun. It's a fun time. Cool. Sounds good. Friday the 13th is out now, currently 40 bucks. Uh, let's go over to Nick to talk about Tekken 7. I'm excited to hear about this, actually. I might even bring this up myself, yeah. Are you a Tekken fan, Bill? I played a lot of Tekken Tag Tournament back in the day, but that's the last okay. one I actually owned. Is Tekken 7 the one that was at E3 last year? Yeah. The one that was out front, and there was like, a lot of people taking pictures. It's kind of confusing with the release of Tekken 7, because apparently it's been out in Japan for a long time, and this is like Revision 2. Okay. I don't really follow it close enough to know the specifics, but okay. it's the first release of it in North America anyway. Mm. Uh, Anybody else here play Tekken a lot, or am I the only one other than Bear? I yeah, I mean, I wouldn't even say I played it a lot. I'm fam- I'm I'm okay at it. I'm okay right. at it. I'm familiar with it. Yeah, it's important because it's a game that's actually stayed very close to its roots despite having this many iterations. I mean, aside from even the numbered ones, there's also tag, like you said, and then the uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken and Tekken Cross Street Fighter, and you know, these characters have all intermingled and had their own sort of style going. Uh, but Tekken 7 is really solid. I am very impressed with how good they made this port. Uh, I've been following the series since the beginning. I haven't played all of the side ones like I just mentioned, but they've got all of the general feeling of Tekken with sort of a nicer level of polish. Um, all the features you could really want in a port, and it came out functional on day one, which for a fighting game, that's like a big accomplishment, yeah, right. apparently. <laughs> <laughs> like they just can't nail it, man. I don't know why. It's not even like any particular developer or publisher. It's just every fighting game that comes out for whatever reason. They cannot yeah. launch They all properly. have all this promise, and then they just like trip over something at the last second yeah. and just fall apart. But uh, this but one did, apparently. Awesome. Yeah, it actually just works. Yeah, good. It, it runs really well. It's very smooth. I think it's rather pretty. I mean, it's not going to blow your socks off, but it is Unreal uh, 4 engine. So, I mean, you kind of get the idea. They generally look pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, nice and smooth. The netcode seemed fine. Uh, I saw people actually saying in the, the reviews that the netcode is so good that they were able to play internationally, and it felt totally good. Like, it just really? felt normal, uh, which is fairly rare as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's got all the modes you could really ask for right out of the, the package. It's got this thing called treasure mode. with uh, It's got a customizable character thing now where there's basically, like, I don't know, it's probably like 250 items that you can unlock by playing treasure mode. Mm. And they'll either unlock for an individual character or across all characters. And you can go in and make custom slots, change the colors and all the items, make them look ridiculous. Uh, you can make like a Dan Giesling holding a fish with a pizza on his back if you want. <laughs> Sold. Yeah, like that's an option. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't make it look exactly like Dan. It doesn't let you like tweak their faces, mm. uh, but you can at least change their hair and their color and their clothes and their accessories and all that. And they, they've definitely gone in the realm of it being very absurd. Uh, they relish the idea of the game just being silly, stupid fun. And although they take the game very seriously in terms of the story, they kind of don't everywhere else. And I, I enjoy that about it. Tekken's yeah. just a silly game. Uh, and it's got a solid fighting system to it. It's got a really good feeling of impact. Uh, 
everything about the controls feels just like you remember it. In fact, a lot of the old moves are still in the game, just sort of bolstered by a few new systems around it. Uh, they have this rage system now where it kind of functions a little bit like Blaze Blue, actually. Uh, or Street Fighter is probably the more accessible example, where uh, when you're kind of down a bit, uh, you'll get this red aura around you, and then you can hit right bumper, and it'll it'll give you this one, like an auto combo, that if you hit the first attack, mm -hmm. you have like super armor for a minute, and they might be able to break your armor enough that it'll stop your attack, but usually it'll just start you taking off a quarter of their health. So that's like a nice way to come back from a losing position. Um, the matches are very short as well, which is, I guess it's sort of a Tekken thing. Uh, usually you can finish somebody off in 10 or 15 seconds, which means you'll be often in a, a position of doing many, many, many rounds just for fun. Like with the treasure mode, it works really nicely. Uh, you get ranks, you get unlockables, and you just move on to different arenas, different people, and just keep playing. It sort of starts to go on like a, a meditation. You just, you're playing tech and your hands just take over. Mm -hmm. Your mind can kind of stop and you just enjoy it. Uh, great soundtrack as well. In fact, there's almost nothing about it that I really didn't like at all. Wow. That's I, awesome. If I was to be really nitpicky, I wish there were more unlockable items, but there's going to be more later, uh, more downloadable stuff as well. It's got almost every character that I've wanted in it, except it's missing, from what I can tell, Gon and Mokujin. Uh, there's probably oh, going to be... isn't that the tree one? The wooden man, yeah. yeah. That oh, takes that on everybody else's abilities. They pay homage to him. I mean, they, they show a picture of him somewhere, but like he's not in the game as far mm -hmm. as I know. Unless he's secret. He might be secret. We got, we got Kuma in there, though. Uh, yeah, you've got Akuma, or Kuma no, and Akuma. Kuma, okay, good. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> the Street Fighter character Akuma and also the bear. Correct. And also a panda. Good. There's also there's a second bear. It's like a lady bear that hangs out with the big bear. You got to have a lady bear. Yeah, and you can customize him, too. You can change his, uh, his shirts and his outfits and stuff. Give him 3D glasses if you yes. want. Yes. Oh, my God. Isn't there a Jaguar head man and then King? robot Jaguar That's head That's King. Man? Armor King. King and Armor King. Mm -hmm. Armor King, yeah. If you wouldn't mind. If Armor King is in it, actually, unless you can dress him up that way. No, if King's in there, Armor King's in there. I you don't just know. Gotta, you gotta I didn't see him Armor in the character King. roster. What if he's like a hidden character? Are there hidden characters? I I don't know. I, I haven't actually played through arcade mode yet, so I assume there's probably ending unlocks. Mm -hmm. um, and I started the story mode. It was really, really melodramatic. And I saw, I read some reviews actually, kind of complaining that it was not really approaching Tekken in the way that they thought it should have been, and that it's largely you're picking random characters at certain moments in the story and then fighting a bunch of like random robots for a while, hmm. which, okay, but Tekken 6 kind of did it better. I don't know. I don't play it for the story, so personally, it didn't I was, really. I, I really do wonder how many folks are interested in those storylines. Not not from a place Somebody of cynicism, but like they put a lot of effort into it. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> like the I, I think about like the Mortal Kombat one, which people were kind yeah. of into, right, and was very detailed. And oh, goody, hey, I've got a virus on my computer. Sweet. Uh, <laughs> oh, but, well, all right. Oh god, that's not fun. Get out of here. It's There's uh, Injustice 2 story mode, right? Like, yeah, I've heard that one's actually it. fantastic, although yeah. I haven't played it still. So. I watched a bit of the first story mode for uh, Injustice 1. Uh, seemed pretty cool. Oh, I actually like fighting game story modes, because like I don't really yeah. like playing competitively online. It's just not my jam. I hate the fighting well, game community. The, yeah. <laughs> and I'm a super casual fighting game guy, too, so like, don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm going to get into this, get really competitive, and then worry about like the minutia of it. I mostly right. play it in broad strokes. So if you're a really big Tekken fan, there might be some more granular criticisms that you have that I'm not going to pick up on. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, as a sort of a casual player, though, it seems really solid. And performance-wise, it's definitely really solid. People with very low specs can actually run this game which is great because this is the first Tekken that's ever been on PC. So to be able to say that you can run this on a variety of computers is just really nice. Mm -hmm. um, it's also got online lobbies, ranking mode, uh, like I said, that treasure mode, which also has rankings associated with it, uh, a shitload of unlocks in terms of like nameplates and titles, the usual stuff you see in like Street Fighter. Uh, they even let you customize your life bar, which is kind of something I've never seen done before. Uh, you can unlock new life bars and titles. That other people can see it. Um, too. That's the thing. I couldn't tell if it's that you unlock them both life bars on your end locally, or they can see yours, and then you can see theirs. Yeah. It seemed like it was locally, but I'm not sure yet. Hmm. I've only got about four hours into it, so uh, I'm gonna learn more as I play. Yeah, yeah. 
And I also got the deluxe version because it comes with this, another character, and that character seems pretty cool. It's like a vampire lady with devil horns. Dope. So, I, if you care, uh, the, the deluxe is a bunch extra. It doesn't seem like a ton of other stuff other than a few more items and that character. So they'll probably sell her separately later if you care about that. I think it was about $20 more. So I don't know if the value is there. I did get it at a discount, though. Um, there's places you can find if you look around. You seem to be able to get $15 off on it most of the time. So do or don't, that's up to you. But the value seems to be there uh, for the normal price version of it, at least. Awesome. Any other questions about it? Uh, no, I th I might actually get it, believe it or not. I oh, mean, the I'm... soundtrack's really good as well. You did, yeah, you mentioned that, yeah. No, oh, did I? Okay, mm -hmm. I thought I didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I man, like I, I remember good times with Tekken, man. So I might I might be persuaded here. Although I, I I'm sure I'll be quickly reminded of how terrible I am at video games when I. Pick that's this okay. Up. I went and played a few online, and lost them all. So that's mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. Me too. Sweet. <laughs> I might get it myself too. Yeah, I, mean, I like I like fighting games casually. Mm -hmm. I, I, have a, I have a fun time with them. You know. Hey, that would be fantastic. I'd love to play fighting games with you guys. I didn't think any of you cared at all about that, so props. I'm just I'm so bad at them. That's the only thing, man. Like I really yeah, can't beat Street Fighter on very easy. I actually can't yeah. do it. Like it's 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 a shame a mark of shame I wear to this day. <laughs> I think Tekken's a little more accessible than Street Fighter personally. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe the the high level players would totally disagree with me, but I feel like there's there's plenty of depth, but I think the depth is a little harder to come by. So if you pick a character you really like, you just kind of match for a while, you'll start it, you get a hang of how to move around. Right. And then eventually some of the subtlety will be teased out, but you don't have to try that hard. When I lived in Korea, I had a friend who shamelessly spent like all of his free days at the arcade playing Tekken 6 and mm -hmm. just watching him get styled on by 12 year old Asian <laughs> boys. It was like, it was like hearing you say that like Tekken is not as punishing. I just think back to like he gets low kicked and then just juggled for like yeah. 14 consecutive hits no, yeah. as well I mean, as <laughs> HP gets chipped away to like 2%. You're right. I mean, just the low level play, the kind of casual stuff that I'm more into uh, is probably a little more accessible. Because no, yeah, yeah. I, I guess that's kind of a thing in every fighting game now. If you're decent enough, you can combo somebody through their entire health bar. Well, Tekken you... in particular, I think it's had that issue for a while, though, especially at the competitive level, where it's like you're playing two top-tier players against one another. The issue is yeah. who gets juggled first, and then that player loses. Marvel versus yeah, Capcom's the sure. same way. Yeah. yeah. And in Blaze Blue, you can start a match, and the first to get a hit, you expect that person to win. Unless they drop the combo, which they rarely seem to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I don't. Is... I, I hate that level of play. That is not fun to me. I'd rather just have fun, hang out, and, and mash and and. and like that is like it's all skill because they they're yeah. inputting the mm -hmm. correct sequence to perform the combo. But oh god, yeah, I I agree, I agree with you in that. That is not in entertaining or enjoyable for me. But to each I'm their not own. Looking there. down on them either. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's yeah. the prerogative. They want to be competitive. I'm just not that competitive. Is mm -hmm. all. This is why I'm a fan of non-traditional fighters, like Super Smash Brothers. Yeah, we need, like, Brawlhalla's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Might even be very good, but <laughs> there needs so. to be, like, a a Super Smash Brothers quality game on PC. Because yeah. it really is something where, like, even if you're bad, at least you sort of know the language. Where, like, you, you possess the mechanical skill to knock somebody off of the map. Oh, Whereas... Right. In, in Street Fighter or in Tekken, there's literally no chance for me to win at my present level unless they can't defeat Cheese, which they probably are going to be able to. The other yeah. part of it, too, is the communities tend to be so vindictive and, like, egotistical, yeah. which really bugs me. It's like, not only did you beat me, but you got to show off your big dick about it, too. Like, great. <laughs> Who cares? It's a video game. Calm down. <laughs> yeah, no, that's why, that's why I, like, I like those games. That is for Honor in the same way, honestly, where it's just like, easy to learn hard to master whereas like yeah. most traditional fighting games are like hard to learn hard much to much harder to master <laughs> yeah, right? like, super hard to master <laughs> it so, actually yeah. took me like probably like an hour and a half to two hours to beat the tutorial the skull girls because by the end of that tutorial they're like all right so we're gonna like give you a medium punch and then you have to break it with a parry and then punish with like your longest combo and that'll build your meter and right. do a super to finish it off and i was just sitting there like 
<laughs> and then you're like, I, I just can't, well, I, I couldn't do it for so long. I mean, you know a lot of that terminology and the way they structure those things, it sort of builds on other iterations of fighting games. So they sort of expect you to have this inbuilt knowledge from playing like Years of Street Fighter it's, or something. It's yeah. like learning Spanish, you know, it's, like where you have to, in a way, yeah. you got to learn your, you got to learn your left jab and then you got to learn your right kick and then you got to learn how to left jab, left jab, left jab, right kick, right punch, right punch, left kick, you know, you got to do all the... Yeah. All the it's like playing shit. A, a paradox game. You play one, you understand it, how to play the rest of them. It helps. I mean, yeah. it, I've got hundreds of hours in the Blaze Blue series, and I still can't finish most of the tutorials for my main character. They're just <laughs> above me. I just don't think I'll ever be able to, and that's okay. <laughs> they do have that mode, though, uh, the stylish mode that I know, Ryan, you like that in Persona 4 Arena. Uh, the, where it technically just kind of does stuff for you. Like an auto uh, combo? Yeah, most of those games by that same developer have that mode now. So you can actually play Blaze Blue if you really wanted to. Now it becomes like I'm forced into a corner and I got to be like, if they make like a non-anime Blaze Blue, <laughs> then the odds of me it's playing it... just not play it, it's fine. <laughs> the odds of me playing that go up a little bit, but... Aren't well, you one-third of the happen. way through all anime? I thought you were... I have seen Ghost in the Shell... Mm -hmm. and spirited away and like eight episodes of psychopaths so some oh cowboy and bebop. i i i should watch cowboy bebop i should watch akira i have yeah. not i i have not seen cowboy bebop either so oh it's so good please I know, watch I hear it's one incredible. punch man <laughs> i did watch Miss there we go Never heard of it. the more you do this the less he's gonna watch <laughs> 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 yeah, like Cowboy Bebop though, I'm not an anime fan either. It's just a good show. It's not even like good for an anime. It's just good. Mm -hmm. You know what? Here's a genuine Tekken 7 question. Yeah. Because I really liked this about Injustice and that got me to play like 15 to 20 hours of Injustice. Whereas, you know, normally when I play a fighting game, I just beat the story mode, go online, lose 20 times in a row and never touch it again. Yeah. Does it have open lobby style with like a spectator mode built in? I don't know. All right. <laughs> no, I tried to do that last night and nobody else had the game. So I was basically, I made a lobby and nobody came and then I just played ranked. So that's, that makes sense. Cause like with injustice, you could set up a lobby and then you configure like the parameters and rules. So like winner stays and then basically everybody just gets popped into a queue and then you yeah. just go through and play each other over and over and you can watch the game happening as well. It has rooms. The only thing I don't know is if you fight matches simultaneously or if it's one by one. So probably you can do that one permutation of it anyway. Word. I'll find out soon cool. enough. Mm -hmm. I like that in Chivalry. Yeah. The dual mode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, as and uh, Guilty Gear XRD version 2 just came out, so I'll be playing that as well. So I'll talk about that maybe next week. Nice. Sweet. As an aside, uh, and I'll own up that like a month ago, I said we all know ARMS is going to be garbage, right? But then, like, the arms open beta or whatever they were arms doing. Arms wide open. <laughs> <laughs> Why Perfect. didn't they do that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Missed opportunity. Damn it. I forget what they actually call it, but apparently. Test like, punch. Te test yeah, punch. That's not Everybody that who did that, who, who, at least that I saw, was like, this is actually really good. So maybe that's an opportunity for me to be like, hey, get in on, like, the ground floor of, uh, yeah, from of, a, what of I understand, a fighting game. Arms is to fighters what Splatoon is to shooters, basically. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's actually, that sounds like... Are you going to do this thing where now I get into Tekken and you're all going to start playing arms? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually what you're saying, though, is like, are you going to do this thing where, like, I learn how to manipulate, like, nuclear isotopes and you guys are going to, you know, That's take like a fourth grade start science turning class. the light switches on and off? Like, yeah. Hard. <laughs> I always thought it looked pretty good since the announcement. I thought that that, that was like one of the rare, uh, you know, things. Arms? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, arms. Yeah. All I thought cool. when I saw arms, all I thought was the Wii Sports boxing game and how yeah, every yeah. game inevitably devolved into people just like punching as fast as they can directly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, people say from the people who've played arms that I've talked to, they said the way to play is with the controller, not the motion. Really? Oh, really? Play with the motion, play huh. with the controller. That's surprising, okay. actually. Oh, but it's not, though. <laughs> it's all it's always the best way to play well yeah but i mean i i would have thought that that game was was going to be designed specifically around not necessarily being competitive but being more like you know go for a right hook and you know go for a straight you know you know what i mean like, who is no who is that guy 
But <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, I got I gotta train you. Hey, that's arms coach. Try, try, try a haymaker. You might be able to get him like that, and then maybe another one over there. He's not very committed to being a coach. He seems like he's not all the way. He's really in. uncertain ah, I'm a about coach. it. I've been coaching for twenty years. It's great, is it? Oh, the it's Rick like and Morty character is what it, it is. Be, yeah, like it's this guy's, Yeah, I think if you give Rob long enough, eventually it just becomes a Rick and Morty. It'll character. be Rick and Morty. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Tekken Seven is fifty bucks, seventy-five for the deluxe edition currently on Steam. Scott, what, hold on. What are you? Why are you? What are you causing shit and chat for? Right? You that? held up one of your arms, and I thought I saw like a bruise on your elbow, and then you held up the other arm. Yeah, what's Whoa. going on with that? Did you fall off your That's bike? Or way, something? This is it's way so better than it was like a month or two ago. It's like a, I had a massive allergic reaction to, to something, uh, and then I started using cortisone cream because I was like, uh. oh, it's itching. And I found out I was allergic to cortisone, uh-huh. and it made my arms <laughs> way <Fuck>. worse. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that was great. So it's been a slow heel since. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'm sorry, but. Oh, that's fine. It is a hilarious story that you were allergic to the cure for. I couldn't your figure ailment. it out. Like, it took me a week to figure it out because, like, all of a sudden the, the rash got all over my arm and it was, like, on my stomach because I was, like, wiping it on my stomach after I was done. <laughs> and I was like, why is there a rash on my stomach? You were now? wiping it on your stomach after you were done? <laughs> yeah, because you, like, rub it. It's like you, you get your hands wet and then you cover it. And then I was like, mm, and then it's put on my stomach. <laughs> I don't know what you want. This guy, this guy comes in his belly button, right? Now. That's, what we're that's, that's what we learned. Uh, hey, Mathis, let's let's turn that conversation topic out of time. <laughs> There's nothing on my stomach anymore. Chat, relax. They want to see it. No, not, Mathis, not, no. show stomach. Tell me about BattleTech. BattleTech is a, the next game by Hairbrain Schemes. Uh, being published by Paradox. They ran a Kickstarter a year ago, Mm -hmm. I think. Um, And it takes, it's the same universe as Mech Warrior and Mech Commander and all that stuff. And what it's going to be is a turn-based XCOM style strategy game um, where you are going up against other mechs. And right now the backers beta is out. And uh, all that gives is like a combat scenario where you can customize your mechs, their loadouts, uh, this, that, and the other, and I really, really like it. It's very strategic. Um, there's a lot of uh, forward thinking you need to put into the maneuvers you're going to put because mechs have, like, weak armor on their back, and uh, some are more maneuverable than others, so if you try and uh, get behind one mech, it may leave you open to maybe, like, two others. Uh, if you like XCOM, if you like turn-based strategy, or if you like the tabletop that it's based on, um, then I think you're really going to love uh, Battletech. The single player, what they plan on doing from paradox con what they said was uh it'll be you kind of commanding your own mercenary crew in this large open map of space where you can work for different people and influence the economy in certain ways uh or you know follow certain story threads through to help them out or foil them um you, your mech warriors or the pilots of the mechs will level up and get different skills you'll be able to name them how whatever you want uh, and then your mechs you can salvage repair uh, stripped for parts, you know, attached to other mechs. Basically, if you've ever played any Mech Warrior, Mech Commander games, you're getting a turn-based version of that. And I freaking love that. And it's awesome. Mm-hmm. And the combat is super it. satisfying, and I really enjoy what's already there to play, which is always a very good sign. I'm going to play it after the stream, because they sent me a code. <laughs> nice. I want to play it. I, re- I, re- I really, I've, I've been, like, fucking fiending for a mech game like i want a good quarterback one. so bad <laughs> he wants it so bad but he wants you to make 3d models for a game make it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> i want a mech game but they, so but real the, real talk yeah. on the unity asset store there is actually exactly the tools that you need somebody has already made i read about it in like somebody else's gama sutra post they've already made like a mech kit with modular mech parts that you can assemble as desired. Cool. That's awesome. So you can just do it. You have the pieces now, to I, the puzzle. I'll I'll learn Unity tonight after I play. I some found, videos, just there's a blender kit. It's like a toolkit that gives you these little inset pieces that are like stencils. They look like decals, but then they're actually rendered in 3D after you're done with them. And it was only 15 bucks. So I was like, Rob would love if I bought this because I could make all these cool technical metal shapes. Which armor oh, yeah. cores did you play, Rob? Uh, I think I think I actually started at three, and mm. I played like a bunch of them in that era. You didn't but play another three, age, Armored Core two, another age. I think was the one. 
No, it must have been so. right guess, before I, you started playing it. Then shoot. Well, it was like it was weird because like it was like back in the day, like I, I wouldn't, I wasn't staying up on news or anything. Yeah. You know, when, when Armored Core Three was around, it was just like walk into GameStop, see what's cool, and be like, oh, that seems that's cool. It's on sale for ten bucks. Let's, uh, oh, let's get that and go for a hand. Young Rob sounds but, a lot like Arms Coach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. so, <laughs> but but uh, <laughs> I played a couple of those. I didn't play any of the um, next gen, which is now the previous gen armored cores. Mm -hmm. um, although I've heard that they're pretty good. So, but um, mainly it's like the customization which BattleTech has, which yeah. I'm, I'm like I'm pumped about. I, I love I love. I'm a sucker for customization in anything. But like with a mech, it's just like, yeah, I'm gonna get a fucking machine gun for my arm, and then have like fucking shoulder rockets on the. Dude. It's badass. And you know what? It reminds me because when I was a kid, we used to have like a uh, 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 drawing time in elementary school, and they gave us stencils with animals and stuff. And uh, they would, you know, you have like a cow, you stencil out a cow or a chicken or something. But what I used to do is I used to like add like lasers to them oh, yeah. or like like rocket packs and stuff mm -hmm. uh to the to the stencils so i think that's really why i like next oh man we we boiled that down to the, an interesting little nugget about rob today that's yep. that, that feels yeah, nice you like mech games because you miss your childhood yeah i do yeah put you on yeah, the therapist I'm, couch today dude it makes me actually want to make a game where farm animals barnyard animals have customizable like you know machine how does that there. not exist <laughs> it kind of does with goat sim. Like you can get the jetpack on the goat. No, I'm talking like a. You got to do like a plants versus zombie style sort of thing where you've got like these customizable farm animals defending your farm from. Yeah. Call it fucking. Might as well do zombies. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Defend your farm from, from zombie attacks with customizable weaponry yeah. on the back of a sheep. What if it was plants and they shot peas and butter? <laughs> I don't think that would work. People wouldn't like that. I don't think oh, so okay. either. No. Yeah, you're right. That's a terrible yeah, idea. Might as well just make it into a first-person shooter instead. Yeah. People would rather yeah. that. Like a team-based thing, like a. Mm -hmm. I've brought it up. I think like several times though. Like I'm, I'm right where I'm right where you are, Rob. Which is to say that like I had that. Well, I didn't draw laser beams on cheap stencils, but I, <laughs> I loved the customizing mech games. I loved the Armored Core Two, especially their arena system where you yes. were customizing your mech to defeat different styles of mechs, and you had to like particularize your loadout based on yeah you, you're right in my wheelhouse there exactly yeah and I, I didn't like the campaign but that mode yeah mm -hmm. exactly so yeah I, I i'm pretty much in the same boat with this i'm i'm probably gonna play it i'm probably gonna love it and uh glad to hear it's a lot slower are... paced so get oh, ready yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. as long as you're okay mm -hmm. with that like there's I'm... a lot of uh heat management and stability management because your mechs came to get knocked over mm -hmm. Uh, if they overheat, they shut down, which will give the enemy the ability to take a targeted shot on your mech, so they can shoot for like the legs or uh, the cockpit or the arms mm. or weapons and blow those off. And uh, that's why the the strategy element for me is what really knocks it out of the park. Yeah, awesome. All right, well, I'm looking forward to that. That's the beta, of course, like Mathis said. It's the Kickstarter backer beta and uh, the full version. Do we have info on that yet? I'm not 100% sure. I think it's... I think they said 2018. Yeah, I, I think it might be next year. It's, it's going to be a while out. Mm -hmm. Like, um, like actually, today, I was, there was, they were going to do a stream um, that I was going to be on, but um, they pushed it back. That's the right. Multiplayer is not working yet. So. Mm -hmm. It says 2017 on their website, so... Oh, okay. Yeah. No, who knows? no hard date yet, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll follow along with that one. And let's go to... All right, I got to be honest with you, man. This one came out of nowhere for me, but Nick, please yeah. tell me about Bokita Heartfelt Reunion. I'm sorry it came out of nowhere. I wish it didn't, yeah. though, because this game has actually been in development for like four years. Really? And I've actually streamed it a bunch of times and done videos on it, and nobody has heard of it. <laughs> oh fuck! Now I feel a lot worse. Please, please tell I me. wish it didn't come out of nowhere. So, Bokita is a very odd game. Uh, it is developed by and published by Rice Cooker Republic. The idea in and and this has sort of morphed over the years since it started as an early thing and sort of turned into a full game. Uh, but the idea at first was that it's a very minimalist sandbox physics game where you can create shapes and then cut them up into little bits and use them for various things to explore this big, stark, white world. Uh, and what it turned into now is a very sort of therapeutic puzzle physics platformer. Uh, you still have that big open sandbox world and you still have the cutting things apart, 
But now there's a story in it, and it's got a really nice minimalist soundtrack, too. Uh, it's got a Metroidvania element as well, where you're unlocking hmm. uh, powers as you go. Like, uh, I think the third one is, like, you can invert gravity. Oh. Um, so half of the game is uncovering the story. The other half is solving puzzles. And in that is a bit of exploration where you have to kind of tease out all the cracks in the landscape to find little orbs and try and find each puzzle to get to the monoliths that you then use to, uh, I guess, eventually finish the game. Uh, I played about four hours of it, and it's it's really a nice permutation or iteration of what it was uh, years ago, only now it feels like a fleshed-out, finished game. Um, it's a very difficult one to describe why you should want to play it without actually just playing around in it. But once you mess around with putting a bunch of blocks down and then slicing them up into little pieces, you kind of get it. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, this is just fun. This is just, it's half fun and half contemplative. And depending on your mood, it can be either relaxing or engaging, right? So, yeah, yeah. Huh. like I said, I don't really know how to sell the game as much as probably it deserves to be sold, which is maybe why it's getting a little bit slept on. But I would say you should at least give it a try or or watch a video or something, get the idea of it. Because yeah. like, nobody's talking about this game, and it should be talked about, in my opinion. Would I say it's similar to Anti-Chamber? Yeah, oh, that was the one. I was I was trying to f remember the name Actually, of the game. Actually, yeah, in some ways. Not nearly as surreal. The game feels a little bit more grounded in, like... I said grounded in, so there you go. <laughs> uh, in, in some sort of... Uh, I want to say like religious mythology, but I don't know where the story goes enough to say yet. It seems like you're coming up with the story between these either two entities, whether they be lovers or planets or natures, gods, I don't know, but two things that are tra attracted to each other and can't be together until you solve these puzzles. Hmm. And the puzzles largely seem to be made up of building blocks and cutting them in certain ways. Or one of them is you have to grow trees in a certain direction uh, so very abstract stuff, but not nearly as playfully surreal as Antichamber. Mm -hmm. But I do see the relation between the two and the fact that they're both very sparsely visual. Uh, they both have a very sort of cel-shaded, flat color kind of aesthetic to them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Is it... I'm trying to figure out, like, is it an open world, sort of? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It is totally open, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and when you start out, actually, uh, if you've seen some of those screenshots of Manifold Garden... It's got that sort of Escher-like infinite worlds going in every direction right, thing to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's got this metaphysical vibe to it that I can't quite put my finger on, but that seems to be the thing about it in every direction. Mm -hmm. I can't quite put my finger on what it is. It's amorphous in that way. Sure. This is, man, this actually looks like something I would love, not just enjoy. Yeah. Like, this, this looks awesome. It's very it's really peaceful. Pretty. It's very calm. Mm-hmm. Well, cool. Well, there we go. I've got something to check out, probably. Bokita Heartfelt Reunion. Anything else you want to mention on it? I think you, you, you're you sort of having to be cryptic in your recommendation yeah, I, here. Well, I have to be cryptic because there's nothing so uh, straightforward about it that I can say other than right. what I said already. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I did just for fun and to give you the idea of the playful side. Uh, you can build blocks way up into the sky and then just like build a city up there if you want out of more blocks. Oh, cool. And then cut the base of it and all of it will fall down to the ground and explode. Nice. So if you want to play around with stuff, there's plenty of options. You've got a big, nice tool set of physics tools to play with. Uh, just go in there and mess around. That sounds, sounds interesting. Similar to what Ryan and I attempted in Astroneer, trying to build our <laughs> little moon base in the sky. Didn't go so Is hot. Is the expansion going to be called Banana? Bokita banana? <laughs> <clears throat> yes. All right. Good to know. Glad you I don't get it. Glad you got it's that in there. Bokita banana. It's like a Chiquita banana. It's a, but do you call them Chiquita bananas? It's like a commercial. It used to be a jingle. And oh. They say it a bunch of times, which is probably why it's in his head like that. What about the one that's banana. like, um, give me your... Played mama, give me yo. Played mama, you know that one? Mm -mm. No, I actually, no. We're talking it's about Canadian, Canadian only one, I guess. Yeah, because, yeah, I would have known it if it was American. See, I thought Canadian that's what you were talking about there. Mm -hmm. No, Chiquita banana. Chiquita. It is Chiquita, actually. I don't know what you're saying Chiquita for. <laughs> Quay? Quay? <laughs> Can I get some queso dip? <laughs> How is uh, Trace the Centaur squatting up to dar? <laughs> <laughs> 
Jesus. Can we get a, like a Rosetta Stone for for, for Dan? Dan. Yeah, yeah, like language. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it shows pictures and then like has you associate them with words. <laughs> oh man, I want I want that. I want the app where you know like Duolingo <laughs> has this little bird that'll pop in every now and then. Like, hey, you're doing great. It's just Dan's face. Like, I'm watching you. <laughs> where you can take pictures of like the Skype things he writes and then it'll sort of translate them but like make it a quiz yeah. so you've got to figure it out mm-hmm. <laughs> this is this is a good idea straight up that's a hundred dollar idea right there <laughs> right there a right hundred dollar <laughs> recoupable translator cost simulator. with the They're language doing, uh... be known as Gizli's oh, this is a language language oh, oh, language. 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 Is good, yeah Speaking of Dan, CBS is running a poll. Who's the most memorable Big Brother? Uh, oh, oh really? Time? Where yeah. is that? Uh, They're on round two right now. Uh, CBS. CBS.com? Yeah, most, the ultimate Big Brother tournament. He's the only one that leaves voicemails on my phone, so I'm not going to forget him. Who is, oh, Mike Boogie or Dan? Right? No, no choice. On here. No choice. Dan's up Mike. 71 to 29 right now. <laughs> Hell yeah. Dan, Dan masterminded Boogie's exit on that show in season 14, so come on now. I got a new Dan voicemail if you guys want me to play it. I don't know if that's like. Is it good though? It's fine. It's, I don't know, is this a round table thing or should I save this for Monday? Uh, dude, by all means. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to stop you. I'm still, I'm still looking for this vote. I can't find it. Oh, I've linked it in the chat. Okay. Right. Exclusive Dan G voicemail coming up. I'm ready. Nice. Nick, stop. Me. <laughs> so I'm sitting here driving with Kanye West. I got inspired. Inspired by your recent shotgun 3D model and the GIMP GNU system you've been using. Anyways, enough about that. What I was thinking that you could actually model gold man in your whatever hacker <laughs> program you use to model that stuff up. Anyways, you model gold man, but you replace yourself with the model gold man, much like, uh, you know, some of those characters on Twitch where it's like a 3D sprite talking. Anyway, so you do that, and instead of texturing it with pixels, Texture with real 24 karat gold. Ooh. Think about it. <laughs> Ooh. Did you hear the sound of, he made at the end when he left? He just hangs up. It. He went. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of texturing it with pixels, you texture it with real 24 <laughs> karat gold. <laughs> so a puppet. Was, was a, dude. And it's an awesome. animated sprite that somehow <laughs> is me. <laughs> so you make. <laughs> You model it, then you 3D print it. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Coded with 24 gold. karat gold. Coded yeah. and marionette thing. And going then on. print it again, but yeah. animated. Think about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how's that? Dan is just high on poll? fatherhood. How's, how's that poll going? He good. was at. Uh, he was at 71 to 29. Oh, 72 to 28. Fuck Let's yeah. go. Hell yeah. <laughs> When you do the, the, the notes at the end of the show, can you label this the Dan Giesling portion of the round? <laughs> <Right. thing? laughs> the problem is Dan's going to make it to the finals, but he's going to go up against uh, Wills. And he's mm. it's going to be hard. Well, that's when we're Dr. needed. Will. That's where we're get, needed. Does he get yeah. $50,000 for this poll? Yeah, what uh, happens he, if you win the poll? I think he just, he gets sent back into the Big Brother house. <laughs> <Take him down! laughs> oh, <no! laughs> he well, can never the greatest, escape. Like, they just show up at his house and like, we're here to kidnap you, Dan. <laughs> Could we get the vote to win him the 50000 and then he'll split it with us, maybe? Sure. That sounds pretty... Well, that's probably, like, illegal, right? Oh, yeah. What you just said. What you just said. Oh. That's well, you wrong. ruined it! <laughs> Let's just start a tauntine. What's a tauntine? That's one of those pools where everybody puts in money and the last person alive gets all of it. Oh. Isn't that... Wait, do, that's not... What is that? It's called a do tauntine? Do we have to... Do we, have to cut, do we have to cut it open and sleep inside it if it gets too cold? <laughs> That's a tauntaun. Yeah. Right. It's a yeah, dead pool. Cool. Yeah. That's how he got his name. A tauntaun is indeed illegal as well. <laughs> well, yeah. Considering you said last one alive, I would 
assume it's that it, it encourages and incentivizes the people to kill each other. I think that's part of it. I found, mm -hmm. a, I found a Washington Post article about tontines. It's sleazy, it's totally illegal, and yet it could become the future of retirement. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's oh. when Social Security dies. Everybody just puts it'll be like battlegrounds. A hundred people put ten thousand dollars each into a pool, and the last <laughs> person alive gets a million dollars. You get dropped you go in a, a you get dropped a in an field island in Russia somewhere. <laughs> it doesn't. You don't have to actually kill everybody. I'm just saying, if you're the last person well, alive out of your one hundred person pool, you get a million. You there can you go. disable them, and you don't know who the other pool is. One day you just get a letter. It's like <laughs> here's a million dollars. Good job outlasting those other <laughs> yeah. pools. Cool. All right, uh, we got one more, one more game on the docket here, and that's Star Trek Bridge Crew. Get back into the VR space, boys. We're going in. Star Trek. We we're gonna do Dead Cells too. Uh, oh, no, no, we did, did Dead like Cells week like week two weeks it's, ago. Uh, I don't know. It's part of our, I was just asking. I thought this was part of our game of the month conversation, Rob. That's oh, what you're thinking of. Potentially, it yeah. yeah. Uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew was just released a couple days ago. It is. I, I'm pretty sure it's VR exclusive. I think it, it is, is VR exclusive. It is 100% VR yeah. exclusive mm -hmm. right now. So there's no, uh, there's no just desktop version of this. Uh, but with that being it would said, suck as a desktop game. It to be definitely honest. would. Yeah, it would be no fun <laughs> at all. <laughs> but as a VR game, it's pretty fucking cool. So I, uh, I went ahead and went through the single player experience quite a bit of it. I played the tutorial and then I played a few of the uh, single player missions. And uh, just going through the tutorial, it, it became clear to me, the one concern I had right out of the gate was, can they make it fun for every member of the crew? And I think the answer to that for now for me is yes, because they did two things. They made each role important. They gave each role very specific tasks that they need to do in order to succeed. And they also made the roles interdependent upon one another to certain lengths. So for example, uh, when you are the helmsman, you are in control of. You, yeah, there Jordy you go. Jordy LaForge it. It. time, actually. Let's do this it. is, yeah, way more now. appropriate here than it ever has Jordy been. Jordy LaForge. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when you're the helmsman, you can control the, uh, you know, like the, the pitch and the yaw of the ship, and you're actually accelerating and decelerating. But to do that more effectively, of course, you have to have your engineer over here diverting the power to those systems. So you've got, like, not very complicated, but, you know, they they've got some uh, some intricacies to them that you need to learn the different positions. It's like uh, the submarine game we played on the NLSS, right? Similar, yeah. yeah, similar. yeah, yeah I think so they like, I'll load the missiles over and over again, and you guys do everything else. The thing with this though is like it's <laughs> it's like I like I mentioned like they have to make the roles not just you're sitting there waiting for something to do, and that that like a good part of it is just you're sitting around because you're out floating around in space, and it's Star Trek, and there's not always a ship attacking you at every given moment, you know, but it's, it like, I, I it feels engaging, which I think is, is the, the most important part of this. It feels I like- I actually think the weakest link in the game when it comes to multiplayer is the captain. I think yeah, it, yeah. Unless, unless the group of you are gonna take your roles ser quote unquote seriously, the captain has the least to do mm -hmm. because he's gonna be looking at objectives and he can like bring up like uh, communications uh, on the screen. But outside of like, pinging where they want to go next the captain kind of is just there to, to like give orders yeah. and in direction if, if everybody's like go fuck yourself i'm doing my own thing captain kind of doesn't have much to do <laughs> <laughs> he can't really change that either is the thing no, like he's not really in direct control of any part or particular system he's just like yeah you're right he's he's kind of the he is the captain and i guess that's yeah it's interesting to consider because, like, even I queued up a couple of times for just, like, quick play just to sort of hop in and see how it would go. And both times I queued up, I got put in the captain role just because I, I assumed it was because nobody wanted to be the captain because nobody wants to, like, be barking orders at strangers on the Internet, which I also didn't really want to. But I, I figured, fuck it, I might as well. Might as well, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, but now you're starting to make me think, oh, it's probably just because the other positions are more fun and they probably chose them ahead of a the lot more interaction spot. a lot more to fiddle with yeah but uh the, yeah I, I i tend to agree with that and the uh, the captain is a little lacking there but uh going back to like what i was talking about with the immersion with the engagement like it you can allow yourself to fall into this make-believe role so easily 
once you start playing this game. And it's so cool the way that happens. Like, it, it feels so natural to just all of a sudden, like, be speaking as though you're an engineer aboard this ship. Like, it, it's, yep. it's cool to just get into that mindset with a bunch of strangers right away, and there's not really anything weird to it. It's just, okay, increasing... Uh, increasing thruster vector now, Captain. That kind of shit. You know, like it, it, it just makes sense, and it, it's what you're doing, literally, with your whole body. It's happening. Yep. It, Give it our only gut, Captain. Ah. There's a lot of little details in the environment that were like incredibly impressive for me. Like when I first booted it up, like uh, on the view screen, um, it's it's the view screen is glass, and it was showing like a slight reflection. Yeah. Of like the, of, like, the stuff, and I'm like, yeah. Hold on, and you turn around, you're like, oh crap, that's like reflecting exactly. like the scenery behind me. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Or when you are uh, in the chair and you're turning to talk to people, like your character will like swivel in his chair, yeah, and like turn if you and it really immerse his neck doesn't just go. Like, the hand, turn, like, <laughs> like if you if you pull your hand up to your face, you can like slowly curl your finger yeah. down, and you can ball, ball up your fist, like just little details like that. And like really watching make... other people play, and like they're looking around yeah. at the screen, and their hands are moving around through all the holographic things and pressing buttons. It just it looks like Star Trek. Yeah, absolutely. like when you're the engineers just like messing around with stuff, it looks good. I'm so glad they did little things where you don't look like a possessed demon when you turn your head. They just swivel their chair and they look at you and they talk to you. Like that kind of stuff mm -hmm. is really, really good. I agree with you. It's really fun. I think there's a lack of depth of the game after the first yeah. few hours. But if your multiplayer is really where it's at, if you can get a bunch of Trekkies together and just like play this for a few hours, you're going to have a good time. Do you need to care at all about Star Trek for this? No. Or is that sort of ancillary? No. You don't nope, have to. You don't. You can completely play it without giving a crap about Star Trek, and it's still going to be a lot of fun to interact. I think I was telling um, you guys, like, I, I really only have exposure to Star Trek by virtue of b it being Star Trek. You know, like, I, I, I can't avoid it right. if I tried, but I yeah. don't really know anything about it apart from that, and I didn't really feel out of place or anything. It just, it's just like, it's, it, I mean, Star Trek is more of just the brand name than anything. Like, Star Trek sells the game, I think, more than it's part of gotcha. the actual game itself. My other important question is, and I, I already know what the answer is going to be, but can you play with both Vive and Oculus together in yeah, the same match? You, okay, you know. so the game was marketed as fully uh, cross-compatible between PSVR, Oculus, Vive. Whoa! Okay, yeah. it, doesn't it doesn't work. work. Yeah. It doesn't work right ah! now. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, I tried to set it up. Two, uh, two of us had a Vive, one of us had an Oculus, one of us was PSVR. And the Vive people could connect to each other, me and the other person, but the yeah. other two people couldn't couldn't connect. It's a bug. They're working on fixing it. It will be cross compatible when they okay. fix it. All I right. don't know how. Here's the thing. I don't know how much of it's the game or how much of it's fucking you. That's play. you play. Yeah. Because it's a Ubisoft game. You're forced to use a uh, you play. So wait. So that, if you run on Oculus, that means you've got to have the Oculus thing open and you play. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> same with the same with the Vive. You got to have Steam VR and you play open. How is it to uh, set up seated VR on the Vive? the Vive? All I did for mine was I took one lighthouse and I just put it on my monitor as like a camera. I'm, I just good. moved my chair just out one. into the area of my of my box. Are they all seated, or is there any standing? Everything is seated. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I'll play this with you guys if you want. I would yeah, love I would to play love this to. with us. Like, I feel I'd like love to, I think to make some fun content. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but yeah, for, uh, that was my issue, my worry, Ryan, too. And it was all you need is one lighthouse plugged in and booted up, and uh, you're you're good to go. If you have it in a in a situation where you have it already, like you could put it into two corners, you can just sit where you are as long as it can see you. You're mm -hmm. good. Will they let you set up seated VR uh, in something below the minimum space for room scale? Yeah, I think they do. Yeah, yeah. All I did was I didn't I didn't even have to redo it. I just turned on one. And as long as it can see you, it's like, you well, may want to switch it to mode A since you're only using one. And I was like, okay. And then it was perfectly fine. I'm moving it from a room where it's set up for room scale to the office, which is not large enough. So. Mine was set up for room scale too. I didn't have to redo anything. So mm -hmm. it's, it's good. It's fun. Uh, I agree. It's, it's very immersive. Uh, I do think it's a little pricey at 50 bucks. Yeah. But if you're looking for like a VR game, like this is the first like game game. It's not the for... first. It's not Wait, the first. What does that mean? Anymore. Like, is there enough content to justify the fifty, or are you just saying it's just popular? I feel it's, like with like, everything on VR right now, you just pay a premium because the right. install yeah. base is so low. You're gonna get so. a good five hours out of it, and then there's like infinite missions where you can just replay like. Oh, so there open. is actually a campaign. It's not like each yes, mission. There is a single player campaign. Stuff. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Correct. There is a campaign. 
Um, one of the cool things, I don't know if you checked it out, Bear, but you can only do it in multiplayer, I think. Maybe you can do it in a single player. Is play like hard mode, where you're flying on the original Enterprise from the... the oh, really? The, but it's hard mode because nothing is labeled. It's all those glowing buttons from like the old TOS oh, set. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you're like, what the fuck does it do? You can't turn on like a, a helper. It'll tell you like label everything, yeah. what it does. But without it, it's just like big square, like red button, blue button <laughs> from like the 60s. It's, like, That's awesome. I would love to see like a crew like learn that and play it without any tutorial help. Yeah. Uh, but as far as the content goes too, I, I haven't really gotten very far into this particular part of it, but I know that there for the, for the multiplayer, there is sort of a, like a generate content system going on where you can like, you, you queue up with a bunch of people and then you can like set parameters. So like, we want to play, recovery missions or we want to play uh firefights or we want to do x and y you know so it seems like there's this sort of system in place right now where you can just jump in and then for like an hour or two the game will just keep giving you shit yeah and generating missions yeah of yeah rescue these people or whatever yep and the way that worked in story mode i really liked it just because it felt so fluid the way they had had you move from point to point and everything felt so natural the way it came up so mm -hmm. if it's anything like that, I really I have actually pretty high hopes for it because that was like I said, like it's really a lot of what they have done contributes so well just to the immersion of being a part of the bridge crew, you know, and and like that is the integral part of this. Can I just lose myself into thinking I am this person in this role? And it does a really great job of that. Uh, and that's about all I had to th say about it too. As a Star Trek fan, as a Star Trek nerd, yeah, uh, I, I only watched it being played because obviously my vibe doesn't work. Woo! Yay! But um, but uh, as as a Star Trek nerd, it it, it does seem really really cool because it it does that thing that that I always want out of those space games where everybody has just one role. Mm -hmm. um, however, I do hope that if they continue it or make another series i know they're adding more missions and stuff right but um if they continue it i would like to see some like a little bit more star trekky missions mm -hmm. to it because like right now it is it is it's sort of you know similar to my gripes with uh what what the trailer for the new star trek show which is like looks like an action show that's not star trek right. But isn't part of the point that they want they have the, the biggest possible pool of users to yeah. gain? Absolutely. So they don't yes. want to alienate anybody that might not be into Star Trek, so they yes. want to keep it open. And you need to give your tactical officer something to do. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like like I totally I totally get that and I and I and I respect that. But I would but what I mean is like if they add other missions at some point, yeah. I would like, you know, cause it would be cool because the thing about Star Trek is like, you know, a lot of it is is like interpersonal relationships and how people react to more yeah you want to bang an alien questions. i understand well that too yeah but, <laughs> I want to be but like, morally like ethically challenging questions and i yeah. think that could be really fun in a setting with you know for for people you know and it's like like should we they kind of this lady but we have to commit genocide on they kind of give you a taste <laughs> of that actually like right at the end of the yeah. uh training Ooh. mission they do, they do some genocide. Really, mm, <laughs> it's a kobayashi maru test point. man they give you an impossible choice with no winning answer that's pretty cool I at the end it. of the tutorial it's great mm -hmm. yeah that's awesome. Do you push the man off the train, or do you? <laughs> well, it is like a shit like that would be. Would, I well, would the first, really like, like you that. make a choice: do you cross into the neutral zone or not to mm -hmm. rescue a ship mm -hmm. that's like broken down over there? And then do you start rescuing people or start murdering warbirds? Right. In space, they always kill you 100 percent of the time if you try to rescue them. Right. Nobody is friendly in space. They just give you the appearance until you go to help them. I is think that's the, the lesson I've learned. Is that the old adage, nobody is friendly in space? Friendly in space. Yeah, that's from watching enough media. I think I've taken that in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, like, going back to your point, Rob, I, I really don't think that they can afford to even be, like, a Star Trek game, weirdly enough. Like, they're just, they're so niche already that they, they got to sell to the entire VR consumer base, I'm sure, at this point, to even be profitable, so... Oh no, I, I I totally agree. But I mean, even even if there's just like, for me that would be I'd be very happy about that. Sure, sure. But I don't, you know, I don't know if it would be profitable at all to have ethical decisions. Although The Witcher Three is a very 
popular game. Same. The Witcher 3 fucking sold more copies this year than it did last year. <laughs> did it really? What? In the first quarter, sales. anyway. If sales. Mass Effect went in that direction of the bridge crew idea, I think that probably would have been better than Andromeda. Hell yeah, I would do that. That sounds great. That would make me want to play Mass Effect. I mm-hmm. want a freaking Star Trek RPG so bad. Bridge Commander was like the closest we got yeah. back in like the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have like Star Trek Online, but like then it does the thing where it doesn't give nope. you the bridge. That's I what I want. To, I want listen, the bridge. I want I each Star Trek to play a different role. Star Trek Online <laughs> barely started its development before it was picked up by any developer. And their mm-hmm. plan initially, uh, and I remember following it closely, was that it was going to be a ship had to be manned by players. And each role had had a bunch of things they do with mini games yeah. and stuff. And then, then it got picked up. And then it was, we're going to try and turn it into like a WoW-ish game. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. It'll be the WoW killer of 2017. <laughs> yep, there it is. Yeah. Finally. Right after Conan <laughs> Exiles. And uh, the relaunch of uh, Perfect or Unknown Worlds or Perfect World. What is it called? Perfect Secret Dark. World. Secret the Secret World, World, Secret World, Secret World, World of Alex Mac, yeah. The Secret World of Alex Mac. <laughs> Legends perfected. MMO. MMO. All right. Star Trek Bridge Crew. It's 50 bucks. Available right now. It's on every single VR platform. PSVR, Oculus, and the Vive. And that's going to take us into... The May Game of the Month. Game of the Month. New segment we're doing here on the show. We decide what our Game of the Month was. Doesn't really require any explanation beyond that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, toss it over to Rob to start off with. Because you're our special guest here. Rob, what was your favorite game in the month of May that you played? Well, I will say there's a caveat. Yeah. Is that caveat this particular game uh, came out in early access this month? Yes. yes. Yeah. No. That's, that's the thing. That's is a that caveat like, we're going to become very familiar with in the next <laughs> ten to fifteen minutes here. Because the thing is, I, I really like Dead Cells. I think it's I think it's uh, really great. Um, but there are there are some it, not not even just that it's not a release game, but like there are some aspects of it that are like this is really access. Like like um uh, for instance, one of the things that I that I actually haven't played it in a couple of days, and and one of the reasons is because I got to the second boss and. Um, I just don't think he's designed that well. He's got like just way too much. It feels like uh, like encountering a hush in Isaac. You know, uh. it's just like suit like a crazy amount of health, and it just it's like a twenty minute long fight when the rest of the game is like really quick. Yeah, you know, um, and uh, and that 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 I I didn't I didn't like very much. But again, it's early access, so it's going to keep getting developed. So um, I w- I would say Dead Cells. Dead Cells. I'm not a huge I, I, surprisingly. I'm not a crazy huge roguelike fan, even though you know I made like 300 episodes of Isaac um, back in the day. But um, uh, there's not a lot that catch my attention, but Dead Cells did. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and if I can't have an early access game, then Friday the 13th. I actually really like that game. I, 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 I'm having a lot of fun with it. Fair enough. All right. Anybody else uh, feel like taking it here? I'm gonna. I'll deviate from the, the what I feel is gonna be the norm. Right, I'm gonna right. say, Prey was my okay. game. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I am really love that game, and I'm not done with it yet. I'm almost done. I think I'm halfway. Um, I heard the ending was awful, or like the last I act. I hear it's, there's multiple endings, but I'm not sure. I mean, the last act, not the ending. Okay, story. it might be. It might be garbage, but uh, really like it uh, a lot. It was what I was hoping Bioshock would have would have been like the 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 sequel ish to System Shock. It's more System Shock than Bioshock was, and I think that's why I like it a lot. Uh, the first 45 minutes to the hour of that game, I still stand by being one of the best openers to games in a very long time. Oh, yeah. I it is an awesome opener. And the game holds up really well. So it's good. Good shit. Nick? Uh, have we ever established whether the game had to have come out in the month that you played it? Or does it matter? I think it, it has does. to have come out in May. I think it does. Probably. Otherwise, PUBG for all the time for Ryan. <laughs> Wait, but you can only pick one once. Correct. <laughs> Correct. And he already, I think he threw that one in last month or the month before. Anyway, um, I was probably ha- going to have it be Rhyme because I have a feeling that that's going to be fantastic. I just was waiting for a performance patch, so I haven't played it yet. Mm. Uh, so I guess that's going to be June's one then most likely. So I guess I have to go with Dead Cells or GoldenEye Source. But GoldenEye Source never came out. Right. So. <laughs> and Dead Cells by default there. <laughs> So probably Dead Cells by default there. Uh, I agree that the game still needs some work. It's definitely not finished yet, but it's very high potential. It's definitely perfect in terms of its uh, its idea towards its execution. It just needs more time. Mm-hmm. Ryan? It's Dead Cells. 
Uh, it's extremely likable and one of the few roguelites that's mechanically fun beyond the slot machine pull of just seeing what's in the item room. And it uh, needs more content, I suppose, is the obvious thing to say, but uh, it's it's very, very good. Have any it, of you guys checked out the Elemental update for it yet? No, no. probably later tonight. Mm-hmm. What I played it today. Does that just introduce like elemental weapons? And you have to be on the experimental branch or the beta oh, okay. branch yeah, of the yeah, Steam yeah. build. Oh, so, okay. what do they what do they add? Like they, it adds uh, pretty much what you'd expect. There's a few new enemies uh, that I've seen. There's quite a few new weapons. Uh, there's some small quality of life changes, like they made going down ropes and ladders a lot faster and just more intuitive oh, thank uh, God. Well, that's good yeah and then they they made shields a lot better too they actually changed oh, thank all God. shields so that they all have this passive bonus that adds a small force field every time you get hit if you have one equipped so yeah because shields are pointless yeah, shields otherwise. were garbage otherwise yeah. so now they're at least yeah, sort of usable i still thought the shield was better than like like a third of the ranged weapons. Really? Yes, definitely. I like the heavy that. crossbow, is, I find mm-hmm. almost unusable. Heavy crossbow, and I just treat like a shotgun mostly. That's a, you just roll close to them and then yeah, tap them. Uh-huh. But like, and I feel like unless you get a great one, the ice bow is kind of like, yeah. like why would I ever shoot somebody and freeze them? Like there's already 25 different uh, skills that I can get that can do that instead. It's basically as soon as you get like the electric whip or throwing knives, you're good on your electric second. Those ones I'm, I'm a big fan of. Yeah. I kind of feel the same way about swords though. I'm like, the rapier, rapier. is great and yep, yep. blood sword and twin daggers are great. And then the assassin's blade is like, Okay. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. Sometimes it's a little too long of a like cooldown period between the animation that kind of screws me up a lot. Yeah. The timing is weird. One of the issues actually is that the the a lot of the weapons um, are are, are uh, based around the crit, right? Yeah. yeah. The crit yeah. is so powerful that um, there, there's kind of no reason to use anything else that doesn't have any kind of yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like it is is the thing. So even like if you have like a rapier level one or two. Yeah. You have to get like a vanilla sword or you know something of that level that's like level 8 to right, even yeah. consider it cuz you're like exactly. why would it why would I ever want this unless the base damage from this sword is better than the crit from the rapier. So mm-hmm. they've got uh, they've got a few new melee was sorry, they got a few new melee weapons in the uh, elemental update as well. So they got like a broadsword that has this really big sweeping arc to it that takes a little m- longer to hit with but deals a lot of damage obviously and then there's a couple other weapons that take that same formula, just apply to different sorts of effects. Uh, but yeah, it looks like looks like they've got like a, a really good idea of what people are looking for for more content as well, which is really promising too for this game. And one thing that I want to say about shields, yeah, just take out the guard break, man. Just don't have yeah. the guard break mechanic. Like it does, it doesn't need it. You don't need to. You don't need to nerf them. They're not that strong. Mm-hmm. You know. I just don't think it's a good mechanic, sure. in my opinion. All right. Uh, mine was also Dead Cells, uh, not surprisingly, I'm sure. Uh, and we, we, I think it's safe to say now that we're including early access releases in the Game of the Month uh, candidacy. Uh, but yeah, there we go. They gotta play more games. <laughs> I mean, Dead Cells is like really good, though. Dead Cells, no, it really it, is, and it probably would have won out. I just mean we mm. didn't have a lot of options between the group yeah. of us. You're right. It, yeah, it, it came out of nowhere too. Is the other thing mm-hmm. for for me at least. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't know that it was. I, I was. I knew about Flint Hook coming out. I knew about. Don't you know, talk Tumble about Flint Hook. <laughs> no, we don't to talk about. I mean, they, like officially, there's another. There's a couple of games I think come close. And to be honest with you, Oxygen not included. I might like as much or more than Dead Cells. The difference right now is I'm like playing Dead Cells, not playing Oxygen Not Included. But then when do you count Oxygen Not Included? Like it came out in early access this month, but it's been in like stealth early access for four or five yeah, months or something right, like yeah. that. So so who knows? And then the other one is well, Oxygen Not Included, I think is uh, like fantastic. But um, really, yeah. the other one is just my pet case which is tumble seed which it i mean we don't need to talk about that again i think dead cells <laughs> is probably better than tumble seed but tumble seed is did not get the credit that i think <laughs> it should get but that doesn't mean that it should be it's like a political choice for for game of the month <laughs> basically i think dead cells is a better game but tumble seed is like the most slept on Word. okay so like we should just make the rule that it doesn't matter when the game came out because we never know when games come out anymore just you can only pick it once how about that? I, but no, but then like, why why not just say Super Metroid for June? 
Because I wouldn't do that. We're talking about relatively current stuff. Rules. I can self give, police. Constraints give meaning to the to the <laughs> I the just, segment. I don't know though, what the relevance there. of it is in the first place. <laughs> give recognition. Look, if I, <laughs> it's so that by the end of the year we can go back and be like, yeah. you know, these are the games of the month that we had over the years. So it makes the the recap at the end. You know, how do you right. feel about this now versus like nine gotcha. months ago, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, Super Metroid, Game of the Month. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Game of the Month from May. And that's going to take us into everybody's favorite segment. It's Ask Roundtable time. Rob, that's where you go. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Ask Roundtable. He matched weekly... the pitch really well. He did. <laughs> Ask Roundtable is the weekly segment where you send your questions into roundtableyt at gmail.com and we answer them. This question comes from Josh. Hi, Josh. It says, you guys Hi, are the bomb. Thanks. Thanks. Since the Witcher Netflix series was met with so much pessimism by a certain member of the podcast, <laughs> I'm curious. Was that me or was that? Oh, that was. I actually don't remember. Was it? No, I think it was Ryan. I think it was me. Oh, yeah, it was Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> I was excited for it till Ryan shat on my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious what franchise from any form of media you all think would translate well into a new video game series. Obviously, one that hasn't been made already, but books, movies, shows, manga, anything is fair game, as long as it doesn't already involve a controller. Let me know what you guys think. Mm. He also requests a Nick's Weird Shit. Game theme song to the tune of the Pokemon theme. He, sa- he says, you got to back me up on this one, Bear. It'll be amazing. And I think he's right. So I've given you the task there, buddy. Now, which franchise do you guys think would translate well into a new video game series? Let's go for ones that haven't been made yet, ideally. I've got one that I've been pondering on for a little while let, here. Let me interrupt you. Sure. Nightmare mode. You can't say Telltale style adventure game. Fuck. <laughs> Give me a few. Nightmare. No, 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 I got, I got one. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got a real one here. I want to see something in the One Punch Man universe, but not a fighting game, because all that would be is you get up to One Punch Man at the end, and he just beats you with one punch, and then that's the joke, and uh, you don't get it. But we can't do that. We got to do something like... I actually really like the idea of... Um, playing some sort of maybe like RPG slash fighting game where you uh, enter as just like some wash up nobody trying to raise through the ranks of the Hero Academy in that universe, oh. which I think is really uh, interesting. DBZ idea. Xenoverse style, basically. Exactly, yeah, something like that. But in that One Punch Man, uh, you know, the realm where they don't really take it as seriously, it's kind of like tongue in cheek and they, they're self-aware to a certain extent, which I, I really enjoy about that whole universe anyway but i think that could be pretty fun something like that any other ideas any other thoughts any other franchises from any form of media that you think would I, all the ones i well? can think of have already had bad games made out yeah, of that's, that's what i could go into too i'm like no that has a game is just bad <laughs> yeah throw out my a few obvious, of those for us to consider too my obvious choice then would be gantz because it's structured basically like a video game would be anyway uh, the premise is all these people through reality in certain situations die for various reasons and they get brought to this room where there's an orb filled with weapons and they're told you have to hunt aliens now. And then they're sent off on a mission where many of them actually die in this mission and then they don't exist anymore in real life. But if they survive, eventually they can accrue enough points to come back to their actual life. So that's like basically a video game premise and there have been video games of it just to my knowledge, they've all been kind of bad. Mm-hmm. So a proper version of that would be lovely because it seems like it shouldn't be that hard to do. But I don't make video games, so I, I shouldn't say that. I've got one. Okay. There's a game coming out for it, but it, it's not out yet, so it doesn't count. And it's also going to be a mobile game, so it's also not going to count times two. Uh, I'd love wow. to see... <laughs> I'd love to see, like... Um, Maybe like an open world RPG style game based in the Firefly universe. Oh, I would yeah. love no. not playing as the Firefly crew. I don't want to play as them. They have their story; it's told already. I want you to. I want to play as my own character with my own crew in that world. Uh, that would be. I think that'd be really cool and a mm-hmm. lot of fun. And there is a Firefly online game, quote unquote, coming to mobile, and it looks fucking awful. Uh, <laughs> but I'd like to see a real, like a real AAA R- uh, RPG in that world. Sure. Yeah. Rob, I know you've got one. Well, okay, so I actually I have, I have probably 
two or it's a doctor, three. Doctor Who Telltale game. Okay, so here's the thing. Yeah, <laughs> well, there's, there's already a Doctor Who. Already you want to watch my, my head explode <laughs> live on the if show. We, if we ignore Nightmare <laughs> Mode. She, she I actually, a Steven Universe Telltale game. <laughs> I, no, no, no. Steven the Universe is already... Oh. It, I, if, if, if they, I, I really think that... Uh, I, it is a mash made in heaven. I don't know why there hasn't been even talks about a Doctor Who Telltale game. It's, it's but there's, a, there's already a Doctor Who point and click out there that came out a few years ago and it was trash. Well, yeah, but that's not made by Telltale. It doesn't so, matter. It, it's, it breaks the rules. It was so bad it shouldn't count. <laughs> yeah, like there, there's a, you gotta, a <laughs> Telltale it. Doctor Who would be would just makes it just makes sense. Like that's just what the show's. You know, play out like, every fucking Telltale game in existence. Mm-hmm. Telltale. <laughs> well, yeah. Telltale. But uh, the the other thing that I would say is um, another obvious one, which would be like a proper Game of Thrones game, but like one that would not be necessarily like, oh, we're playing Skyrim, but it's in Westeros. Like it would be like, you know, with with more of um, sort of like the CK2 Game of Thrones mod, you know, uh, mm. uh, but not, not necessarily that, but with those kind of ideas where you, you have the intrigue and you have the backstabbing and the plots and shit like that. Like, that 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 seems fun to me in an RPG-style scenario. Civ, um, but a Game of Thrones Civ game. I wouldn't be against it. That's not I'm, a bad idea. I'm down. Um, and then and then my, my third one is a little bit farther out, which is um, sort of like Mathis' thing with Firefly, except it's set in the Expanse universe, because the Expanse has a really, really cool world i don't know how many people have watched the expanse probably none, 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 none i don't even know what that is yeah no it's like a it's a sci-fi show but it's set in the somewhat near future and like earth and mars are in this cold war uh is it british or something no actually it's, it's american a, yeah it's, uh, i've never heard of it it's it's yeah. on sci-fi so that's probably why uh, it's but pretty it's, pretty new but it's, too but it's a like it's way above the quality of a typical sci-fi show but it's got a really interesting uh universe in that like you know there are three factions that are kind of at at odds with one another like they're the the poor people that live in the asteroid belt mining and uh and then mars and earth and some cool stuff i don't know it would, i think oh, i think man. it would be a cool rpg it's it's a it's a really good show by the way i would highly recommend it one of the stars that. of that show she's got an awesome name Sh- <laughs> shorey adashlu that is a pretty i thought you were gonna say now. she's got an awesome ass <laughs> i'm sure she does <laughs> <laughs> yeah Actually, it's a Canadian show. The the more you know. Wow. Mm, okay, but they, they just they just send the push notification to your phone. The, yep. uh, the newsletter. <laughs> what about a Black Mirror video game? What would that be? To be if you do it Telltale style, then you could probably no, get wait, away with not it. Not a Telltale style though, like an actual Telltale video game. fucking Black Mirror episode. Then there's a combo for you. I don't know how you would pull it off, but I feel like it could be incredible. Mm. I guess it's the David Cage game that's never been made yet. I'm with Mathis. I got I get enough depression watching that show. I don't need to play yeah. it. Yeah. No, I want it, it to be so insidious that it haunts your dreams every night. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't finish the show, man. I just it was too I, heavy. Yeah, for me. I'm kind of with you. I, like I I don't want to go back. I, I, I every time I go back, yeah. I'm like, surely it won't be as terrible this time. It is. It's it a is. piece. It's a piece of media, though. I get it. It's just not. I, it's so it, like. This is this is a very tangential conversation, but like it's the the scenarios that they concoct in that show are so real and relatable as compared to like standard media fare that like it makes me think, oh fuck, this could actually happen to me. Uh, I think I've watched all but two episodes now, and I love them a lot. And the production values are so good; mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. can't believe it. It's anyway, just, this is so well written. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Brooker's a genius. Josh, thank you for asking. What's your favorite current Netflix series? Appreciate that one, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Soon to be The Witcher. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Josh, for the question. If you've got a question, send it on over to roundtableyt at gmail dot com. Nobody cares to know what I would oh, like no, to have as a video game. Dude, I forgot you. My bad. What what you got? What you got? You know, what'd be really cool is if you like combined. Hacknet and Deus Ex with the Mr. Robot license. You have like a little Mr. Robot mm. hacking espionage game. Can I admit something to you? Yes. Yes. Never seen an episode of Mr. Robot. Mm. <laughs> Seems like it would fit the theme, though. You know what? You're not wrong. Having seen the first season of the show, I think you're onto something there. So good job guessing. It, 
it could work. It could work. Yeah. You get the Twitter I, synopsis when the show's up anyway. Everybody's like freaking out on Twitter yeah, about every episode. Actually, like in that in that respect, you could do something like uh, like like a uh, sort of Mr. Robot, but like uh, you, it's a management game where you're managing like hacking cells. You know, like like groups of people what? that are that are well, because that's basically. Oh, you mean a game where you play as the CIA? Well, kind of, yeah. Like, but it, but you're 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 kind of hacking <laughs> hacktivists instead. And you're oh, hacking cells. the hacktivists. <laughs> yeah, you're like you're setting up cells all over the country. You know, doing different yeah, missions. Okay. So you're yeah, like yeah. counter counter terrorism. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Which I guess is just terrorism. <laughs> I, no, it's just yeah. terrorism, isn't it? It's yeah. There's a math problem behind that. And yeah. All right. I, I didn't forget anybody this time, right? We're good. Okay. Cool. Well, that's gonna do it then. That's gonna <clears> send <throat> us into everybody's favorite segment. After their favorite segment, it's time for Nick's Weird Games. All right. This is Nick's Weird Games to the tune of the Pokemon theme song. Hell I have yeah. a karaoke backing track, as always. <laughs> the uh, added uh, caveat that I cannot sing. And the second part of that is there is a part in the chorus where it goes like, you know, Pokemon, gotta catch them all. But then as the all comes out, it also bleeds yeah, into another that's, line. Yeah, that's some so studio magic, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to need you to imagine that part. Sure. And can I get, a, can I get a, a bass note for, like, I want to be the very best? Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. No, that's too high, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's, mm-hmm. I want to be, I want to be <laughs> like animals can Please. listen free. Can we just be a really shitty version mm-hmm. of the Warp Zone and I do want our own to acapellas? Be. Something like that, okay. I mean, there is, there's like a backing track on this karaoke track, but it doesn't make it into my brain. Yeah. Okay, so. Dun, 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 dun. Let's give it a sec here. Feel <clears throat> that warm up. Mmm. I want to guess a Nick's weird game that no one's ever played. It got a five from IGN. It's a mediocre game. Do, do, do. Nick will scan across his shelf, searching far and wide. All weird games that did so bad. The studio died. Nick's weird games. Gotta guess them for PS3. Published by Atari. Nick's weird games. Oh, like Toki Den. No one's played it till the end. Weird games. Gotta guess them. Like really, dude. A flight sim for PS2. Dermovic. Yes, I L2. Nick's weird games. <laughs> gotta guess them all. Gotta guess them all. Nick's weird games. Yay! <laughs> Woo! Uh, I have uh, commitment. Have you ever seen? Uh, there's like a 2017 version of the guy who sang the yes. song singing it again. Yes. Really? Yes. It is really. It's kind of creepy. Yeah. <laughs> that voice. I'm serious. I can't believe that voice comes out of. That man. That man, yeah. All right. Yeah. Shit. Huh. Next week, you guys got to do a Nick's Weird Games, but Pokemon rap style. So just rattle off a bunch of games. I'll give you, I have the list of all the games that we've done already, so you there can you include Oh, that. dude. Perfect. There all right, there's like on. 90 of them, though, so <laughs> we have to do right. several segments. This will be 89, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Well. Look at Tuck Sneasel. Oh, Sneasel. Sneasel. One. Oh, that's the one. I. That's the fake one. Yeah. No, it's I, a real Pokemon. Sneasel is. Yeah. He's right after oh, yeah. Lickitar. Sneasel and he evolves into Weavile. <laughs> Don't we have a segment oh, that we do straight here? Straight up. I think we have a segment. It's Nick's weird games. Close your chats. <sighs> Nick's gonna. Help us. Uh, oh, he's us like, he's like Sneasel's like angry looking. Yeah. Is he? Sneasel? Oh, fuck. Now you got it's me on this deck. Uh, I said two. I should know this. Yeah. He's dark and ice. He's pissed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's got, he's got like a little claw. Hair. I expected him to be yeah. like Ugh. adorable and cuddly. You know, like, I don't oh. like this one. <laughs> I must have disregarded his name because I didn't like it. Yeah, it looks like a weird Meowth, but like a lizard version of a Meowth. Yeah. It's also a mole. Hold on, Chad. I'll help you out here. There you go. I thought it was fake. Yeah, there it is. Look at the, look at the sneeze right, with play... this, Chad. All right, let's do it. You let's do play Nick Wheels game. game. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
All right. Uh, this is probably not going to be super hard, but I'm guessing you've never heard of this game, even though you've heard of the, the genre or the, the type of game that it's a series of. So okay. uh, we're talking about a GameCube game today. So that already narrows the field quite like, greatly. Quite a bit, yeah. Yeah. Apparently it also came out on PS2, but I've never seen... Oh, because it was only in Japan, that's why. Mm, yeah, uh, so we're only talking about the GameCube version. Mm -hmm. came out March uh, 2004. It's both single and multiplayer. Okay. Let me stop you right there. Yeah. Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg. I don't own that, but that's... <laughs> Is it published by Majesco? No. Wait, yes, actually. Oh. Goblin, <laughs> Goblin Commander. Yes, no, it's oh, not that. Oh, oh, I thought he had it. <laughs> I thought he had it. I didn't even look at the publisher when you'd said it, so that's why I was actually taken aback by you saying that's it's by funny. Majesco. All right, let's keep so, going. Yeah, published by Majesco, mm -hmm. uh, developed by Hudson Soft. So take a shot right now. It that says, might be all you need. They're the um, like they're the Adventure Island guys, but they have like one other property. That's all. When you think about Hudson, there's always like yeah. it's it's smarmy, and it's like a little <laughs> like fake Mario guy. What's that Hudson property? Well, I can't tell you. It's not Bomberman. Maybe it is a kind of Bomberman. Oh, he's it's Bomberman. It's a Bomberman. It's a Bomberman. Why do you think that? Because the Cause way your Hudson. face contorted. What else we got? <laughs> what else we got? Tell us a little bit more. It's a Bomberman. Is it a Bomberman? Is it a Bomberman? It must be a Bomberman. I think it's a Bomberman. All right. Game features a normal mode, a battle mode, a standard battle, a battle one two, battle for balloons, and knockout battle, as well as a mansion. Is it? Is it a bomber mansion? <laughs> is it, <laughs> this is either bomber man or fucking Mario Party that you're describing. I'm, guys, I'm really desperate for games at this point. And <laughs> You said we weren't gonna get it. <laughs> Wait, no, this... I said you were gonna get it. I said this was fairly easy. Oh, this you ah, oh, I misheard. So it's a Bomberman. Then. It uses bomber cell man. shading, like the previous game. So it's a, it's a Bomberman. <laughs> I'm gonna say three. That's one Japanese of those Bomberman games. The song is called Boku wa Gakapuchi. <laughs> yeah, oh. and then he, it shoots the dragon out of the. And bomb. it was replaced with a rock instrumental. Could it perhaps in be Bomberman three? Uh, no. Four. Mujo and the Hige Hige Bandits were sick and tired of Bomberman Generations. No, try other words. Okay, Bomberman it's not Axe Zero or whatever. It's no, called. that was only on Xbox 360. Bomberman Rebirth. Bomberman no. Ultimate Edition. <laughs> Bomberman Reloaded. Bomberman. This is a problem because I can't even remember the Bomberman that came out for <laughs> Switch three months ago. So <laughs> it was like. A letter, right? It was like R yeah. or something. Bomber man. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Bomber, bomber man. Bomber man. Bomber man. man. <laughs> bomber I mean, bomber man. I've gotten it, but like this is bomber stupid. man aftershock. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, can you guess the correct word? I know. <laughs> bomber man infinite. Bomber there aren't man even any ways wild. that I could give you more hints because you know what series it is. So now it's just, can you guess bomber the word? Bomber man. <laughs> give us a hint at the word. Uh, high flying adventures. Bomberman planes. <laughs> Bomberman balloon. No. Bomberman, Bomberman air riders. No. <laughs> Bomberman. Oh, so nobody's actually played this one, I assume, then. Um, GameCube uh, Bomberman um, game, nobody's played it? Uh, well, no. actually, probably, like, way back in the day. Bombermans of Icarus. <laughs> Bomberman. Bomberman. Take me by the I don't know what to do here. Should I just give you guys yeah, the give points? It, yeah. We're just gonna, yeah. It's gonna be a bomb bomb time. <laughs> Bomber man takes me Bomber man jetters. No. no. Uh, Bomber man jetters. Jetters. Wow. Jetters. There he is. He's oh. a man. Huh. He's got bombs and jetters. We nice. will not be making any YouTube ad revenue from this video. <laughs> uh oh. For showing it to the camera. Yeah, <laughs> nah, it's got the word bomber in it. word bomb in the title. <laughs> the Hige Hige bandits are going to crash their artificial comet Dark Star into planet Bomber. As Bomberman, you must destroy the four engines that propel Dark Star before it is too late. All new Chara bombs, all new bombs, and same great Bomberman action. Well, all right. I don't think I ever played this. I don't know why I own this. Bomberman Jetters. It's got a red pterodactyl and like vines and bombs. How do you fuck up Bomberman, by the way? <laughs> it's just squares. It's squares within squares you put bombs down. 
You know, people shit on Call of Duty for making the same game over and over again, but Bomberman <laughs> is just Bomberman. It's just Bomberman. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. Chat scrolled way too much to even pick a winner here. This one was a bit of a shit show. Sorry about that. <laughs> that was a hell of a segment. Apparently, Tomo threw up. Oh, what? Yeah, just an indication that I have to go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's wrap this up then. Hey, everybody, thank you very much for watching this episode of Roundtable Live. We appre- Oh, God, that's the echo. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much for being out here on twitch.tv slash roundtable podcast. Of course, that's where you can find us every single week, streaming here live at uh, 3 o'clock Pacific, 6 o'clock Eastern time. I want to thank our uh, subscribers from today, Space Your Name, Nekusol, and Quicken. Thank you all very much. I'm going to try to do my best to remember to do that at the end of the uh, episodes here. We really appreciate you guys. Uh, subscribing to the channel here. That does support us, of course. Uh, you can also support us over on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash roundtable, where we want to thank our patrons at the $20 level and above, which include Julian Avelsgard, Jonathan Graham, Scrotty119, Ricky Greist, Ellis Spice, John Kalchik, O. Thomas Games BR, Jakar Sampson, With the Dance Number, Kulnar, Sehoa, Jamie Tinsley, Joseph Boss, Penn Michael Bush Larson, Talks to Wall, TJ Majesty, Chaos of Full Commitments, What I'm Thinking of, Theorist, Colby Klein, <laughs> Greenlight, Oren Saltzman, Christopher Flagg, Eric Schooley, Brizzlebrip, Positron, Myth Scarab, Mediocrities, Justin, Simurfet, and Logan Ray. Thank you guys very much for keeping that Thanks, list everybody. so long every time I read it. I really do appreciate that so much. Thank you. Uh, if you missed any part of today's show, you can catch the VOD over on our YouTube channels. That is, uh, of course, B-A-E-R Taffy along with Mathis Games and Rock Lee Smile. Uh, Packer Patrol, thank you for joining us today as well. Where can they find your stuff? I'm at Packer Patrol everywhere, Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. Um, and uh, actually, tomorrow, uh, probably somewhere in the 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. range, uh, we're going to be doing uh, movie night. Uh, yeah. So we're going to be watching a public domain movie. We already did Night of the Living Dead and Nosferatu. Um, there's a straw poll actually up on my Twitter right now if you want to vote on the movie night. Reefer Madness. <laughs> yeah, actually, Reefer Madness is up there on, on the list. Uh, too. I've watched that a couple times. It's pretty wild. It's a good time, yeah. yeah it's, it's short, fun. too. You could probably watch it, no problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think right now what's winning is Little Shop of Horrors, um, I'm uh, pretty sure. But, nice. um, yeah, maybe Last Man on Earth. Who knows? We'll see. Cool. All right, I'm going to go let Ryan clean up some cat puke. Thank you all very much for watching this episode <laughs> of Roundtable Live, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. 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 Play the music. Play the music. There it is. Dude, we. All right, there it is. Bye. Yeah. We. <laughs>